The story begins in a cozy building with flowers growing outside and beautiful warm weather. The girl suggests that the young lady, busy with her manicure, leave the organization of her birthday party to the planning company. The red-haired girl continued to apply polish to her nails. She looked at the result and assured her interlocutor that there was nothing for her to do anyway. The girl who was unpacking the package was not happy with the answer and realized that all she was doing was ordering things from online stores and all the work would be done by her. In the box was a CD called Western Male Models Fierce Battle for the Girl. She took the movie CD out of the box, which interested the hottie, who was lying on the couch and grooming her nails. No sooner had she enjoyed the sight of the disc and scrutinized it closely than it was snatched from her hands. The pretty girl's name was Zhu Yan. She asked what kind of look the girl had and whether she thought she needed to watch this cheap, low-quality and vulgar movie that is only bought because of Western men. The girl looked at Zhu Yan and thought that although she was very bitchy, she was really beautiful and would be able to stay on the pedestal once she got into the entertainment industry. Elite men are lining up around her, otherwise she wouldn't even be a candidate for sorority president. A friend ironically said that of course does not offer this, after he asked why Zhu Yan is looking for movie distributors. Zhu Yan inserted the disc into the receiver while her friend spoke to her. She replied to the one that it was because she was nice, which put her in a stupor. Zhu Yan asked the girl not to talk nonsense about her on nursing. If she heard any rumors, she would say that she was the one who invited her to watch it, and afterwards the friend remarked that no one in this giant university, no one can spread rumors and cause trouble better than Zhu Yan herself. There was static and hissing sounds on the TV screen as if there was no signal. Later, a loud rumble and a scene began where a girl was sitting on a chair and brushing her hair. She was leisurely running the comb through her strands and not looking at the screen. Zhu Yan's friend noticed something amiss and tried to convey some information to the girl, but failed. The girl in the TV screen continued to brush her hair slowly and leisurely. Zhu Yan interrupted the girl who was sitting next to her and said that the actress was very pale, but her friend kept saying that wasn't the case. She asked if it didn't seem familiar to her, and if the horror movie with Sadako started with the same scene. The TV girl seemed to hear the conversation from the couch and stopped brushing her hair. She turned toward the girls and looked at them with her red and intimidating eyes. Zhu Yan watched and tried to remember the movie her friend was talking about. She confirmed that there is indeed that scene in there. The girl was horrified that the monster was looking right at them and recalled an incident from a comedy show where a guest said she watched Western and Asian horror movies. After when Sadako was mentioned, the Demon King was shown and he claimed the episode was real. She asked Zhu Yan what kind of scary thing she usually watched, but the girl was a little uncomfortable with the question. Zhu Yan was sure that this was a romantic movie and some handsome guy was about to appear behind the ghost's back and ask to do something. Zhu Yan opened a packet of chips and went on to say that's what they often do. Use famous horror characters and make them do what they need to do. She also said that taking an ugly girl with a bad figure for the lead role for some stunt, Zhu Yan also noticed that the girl in the screen is too ugly. Abruptly, the ghost rose from her chair. She headed towards the window. Zhu Yan's friend was startled by this, but the red-haired girl herself didn't pay it any mind and continued watching. Ghost, when she got to the window, she opened it immediately. After she opened the window, the ghost turned around and began to stare in the direction of the girls with her red, intimidating eyes. Zhu Yan was excited about it and was expecting something, probably a guy to appear in the shot. But no guy showed up. The ghost just climbed up on the windowsill. She quickly jumped down from the window. After that, the end came out and the movie was over. Zhu Yan didn't understand all of this and asked surprised where the handsome man she was waiting for was. Yi Zhu Yan continued to indignantly criticize the movie, asking herself where the transformation from ugly ghost to beauty was. It couldn't have ended like that. The girl was distracted by a call from an unknown number. Her startled friend had picked up on something amiss, but Zhu Yan herself simply answered and listened. Over the phone she heard a trembling voice repeating seven days. Zhu Yan was angered by the strange call, and she yelled at the caller that this one had terrible pronunciation and was trying to pass himself off as an American caller. Afterwards she called him a loser. She said she was leaving a bad review and threw her phone to the side. Zhu Yan pulled out their TV disc and her friend wanted to ask her something. The frightened girl asked, did Zhu Yan really think it was all a prank? Zhu Yan considered the disc and asked her friend in return if she really thought a Sadako wannabe would crawl out of the TV. Zhu Yan threw the movie disc right into the trash can and asked the girl to remember to take out the trash. Zhu Yan also added to the girl that when she was done doing unnecessary things, she would go take a shower. The sounds of hot water could be heard from the bathroom, meaning someone was taking a shower. Along with the sounds of the shower, soft singing in a woman's voice was also heard. It was Zhu Yan who was humming a song and taking a shower. She took some of the shampoo in her delicate palms. Later, she started washing her hair and asked herself what she would order for takeout. That's when red hair started falling on the girl's legs. Zhu Yan saw this and was not in the least bit scared. You could clearly see it in her eyes. 
She grimaced and started to gather her hair in her hands and realized it had fallen off her and freaked out. She felt someone's gaze on her and turned around. From the shower stall, she saw the silhouette of the girl from the movie she was watching today. Juyan recoiled back in fright. He banged his elbow against the shower stall wall. She took hold of her elbow and calmed down a little. Despite her fear, the girl decided to look again at the place where the ghost was, and there was no one there. The girl couldn't get enough of it and she wiped the steam off the glass and saw her reflection. She assured herself she was just scared. After showering, Juyan went somewhere in her robe and slippers. A couple minutes later, she was already sitting at her laptop looking at something with interest. She was leafing through the tape and smiling a little, visibly interested in some topic. She was looking for information about Sadako. She saw a bunch of movies and said that the producer seemed to be in a lot of debt. The girl turned off her laptop and assured herself that she just shouldn't watch horror movies, especially in the company of the cowardly Zhi Xiaoming. The girl was preparing to close the lid of the laptop and had already reached there with her hand. But someone grabbed her. The monster also grabbed the lid of the laptop and stared at the girl with its red eyes. The girl was not in the least frightened and her eyes were glassy and showed no emotion. Juyan looked in the mirror and cried, apparently it really scared her. The monster knocked on the mirror. Juyan herself said that if she wanted to scare her, then do not do so again. The girl roared and explained that she hadn't noticed at first and thought she looked like a ghost. She also added that if she were as ugly as this monster, she wouldn't be able to live. At the end, she said that ghost girls are very evil and can really find out what the victim is afraid of. The monster kept looking at the girl's face and repeated the word ugly. Afterward, he is on the phone several times said seven days, after which he disappeared. It was already the night of the same day after the terrible events in Zhu Yan's house. The girl sat on the couch near the window and stared into the screen of her phone. She was flipping through her contacts feed and trying to find someone to help her. Zhu Yan thought about who could help her with such a scary case. Sorority sisters, her parents or fiancés with different motives. She also asked herself if she should call the police and say she saw a ghost in the middle of the night. The depressed girl realized that the law enforcers would consider her words as a prank and at best just let her go or send her to a psychiatric hospital for treatment. She kept picking out a person from her contacts who could possibly help her and sort of found him. The girl chose Ju Weixing, he was the one she was going to ask for help. The phone was ringing loudly in the guy's apartment. Ju Weixing was still lying on the bed and reluctantly woke up to the sound of the phone ringing. It was two in the morning on the clock and the guy, without getting out of bed, answered the call. He brought the phone to his ear and heard Ju Yan's voice saying hello to him. The girl's voice finally made the guy's eyes open and he started to wake up. The girl said she wanted to tell him something and the guy immediately jumped up and sat on the bed. The agitated guy interrupted Ju Yan and asked her that this guilt was plaguing her in the middle of the night and she had been thinking about her irrationality since that day. The guy jumped up from the bed and ran to his closet. He assumed as if Ju Yan realized that it was better to live with her brother. Then he said he could bring her rice, change light bulbs, clean the drains, and even help her deal with the bad guys. The guy kept crying to the girl, but the girl wasn't listening to him, only thinking that she really wanted to send that lad back to his mother's womb to remake her child. The proud guy was choosing his outfits and told Juyan that she was the first person who disliked him. He also said that the girl didn't think straight, and now she regretted it. The girl remembered how she had thrown her brother in the pot as a child, but now she realized that it was wrong. Shin himself had said that in order for him to live with his sister, she had to reconsider her attitude towards him. And Zhu Yan realized that if she let him in, she couldn't kick him out anymore, so she told him not to come and stay at home. Shin hearing this came as a bit of a shock. He was already standing with his suitcase, dressed and ready to move. The guy indignantly asked his sister if she wanted to try a little harder, his expectations not that high. The yawning girl said it was getting late and asked her brother to go back to sleep. Zhu Yan hung up the phone and the guy looked at the mess in his room and realized that he had been rejected by his sister again. The next day begins with a noisy school where students are walking around, making noise and discussing something. In the dining hall, the students turned abruptly to something. Something had caught their attention. The culprit of all the discussions and looks at herself was Zhu Yan, who was walking through the dining hall and was recognized by almost everyone there. The girl walked past the crowd of students and thought about yesterday's ghost. He was trying to figure out who wanted to hurt her and why scare her. The girls at the table waved at Zhu Yan and showed her to sit with them. They had ordered lunch for her too. The students nearby continued to discuss something, and Zhu Yan sat across from Shi Xiaomeng, who looked very aggressive. Zhu Yan unpacked the tube while her friend continued to sit as if in a trance. Zhu Yan was dissatisfied with her friend's appearance, so she asked her friend why she looked like a ghost and didn't apply makeup. She also said that Zhi Xiaomeng didn't wake up in the morning and walked all the way in her sleep. Xiaomeng was a little distracted by Zhu Yan's words and even looked at her. But the beauty asked her friend if she was trying to reduce the attractiveness of their sorority. Xiao Meng carefully placed her fork on the tray of food. She approached Zhu Yan and whispered to the other one, asking her if she had seen the same thing at night. 
Zhu Yan wondered what her friend could tell her and was intrigued by her words. Xiao Meng told how she saw a ghost yesterday and thought she just imagined it, but when she was washing her hair, here she was interrupted by Zhu Yan and added that she saw a woman's face reflection in the mirror. Xiao Meng was horrified to hear this and asked Zhu Yan, Did she see this too? Zhu Yan thought that if they met the evil spirit at the same time, it could be explained. But even the handwriting is the same. It really can't be a coincidence. Just then, the girls were approached by another student who heard their conversation and decided to ask them what they had seen. Xiao Meng and Zhu Yan turned around in surprise and stared at the girl. It was Liquian, a sorority sister. Zhu Yan recognized her immediately and thought that she had always wanted to be the head of the sorority. And if she knew she was being threatened by a ghost, she would take the chance to hit her when she fell. Looking into Xiao Meng's sparkling eyes, Zhu Yan already realized that she had some thoughts. Likian asked the girl why she was looking at her so intently, and in response heard that Zhu Yan had seen the picture that Likian's friend had posted yesterday. Zhu Yan immediately jumped on Likian, saying that she has a heart-shaped face, but she still wants to make her chin so sharp. Is she trying to become the owl queen of this season? The girl continued, saying that the one scared poor Meng Meng, who now wouldn't sleep at night if it wasn't for Zhu Yan their leader, who has been channeling even social status ever since the one doing everything to appear superior in the eyes of the public. The girls also began to add oil to the fire and criticize Qian Qiang, saying that she should listen to Zhu Yan more. Qian Kong herself continued to listen to the girls discussing her, trying to assure that it was all for her own good. The girl clutched her textbooks tighter and nervously said that a new version of Photoshop had just come out, and she decided to play around with it. In two pictures, it was worth it for everyone here to turn pale with fear. Later, the girl suggested to stop talking about it and eat faster. They still had classes after lunch. Meng Meng called Zhu Yan with her, and Qian Kang heard this and realized that there was definitely something wrong with these two. Meng Meng ran with her friend down the hallway, guiding her to the classroom. They quickly found themselves in the art classroom, where Meng Meng nearly knocked Zhu Yan off her feet. She grabbed Zhu Yan's arm and started blaming her for everything, saying that they shouldn't have watched the movie, and the disc should have just been thrown away. Zhu Yan snatched her hand and slapped her friend's palm, then she began to speak already herself. She ordered her friend to shut up and asked her friend what she could do besides counseling and dirty emotions. She also added that if it was Meng Meng, she wouldn't have survived past the third chapter in comic horror. Meng Meng was sobbing and hysterical. She said that something happened because of them, which means Zhu Yan should find a solution to the problem. Zhu Yan told her friend to stop roaring and pretending to be stupid. She also suggested Meng Meng to look at her actions and their consequences. Zhu Yan swept up that the disc is mystical, and everything happened because they watched it, which means that the solution must be related to the disc. She remembered that in a horror movie you have to get someone else to watch the movie to transfer the curse. She doesn't know about whether it works with a ghost, but a seven-day death notice has already been issued, which means the solution must be close. You may need to destroy the disc, but you still have to find it. Concerned Meng Meng said they could find it. She threw it away in Zhu Yan garden and they don't need to go through the trash can. Meng Meng headed towards the exit and shouted to her friend to urgently start searching for the disc. But something startled the girl. She stopped and looked somewhere with a frightened look. She looked toward one canvas and screamed in fear. Zhu Yan saw where her friend was looking and decided to take a look as well. There was a painting of a ghost that haunted them after watching the movie. The ghost of a girl looked with her penetrating gaze directly at her girlfriends. Meng Meng was about to shout at the top of her voice that she had seen a ghost, but her lips were blocked by Zhu Yan's hand. She pulled her frightened friend to her and told her that if she wanted to stop being the hull goddess that everyone envied, and instead be a raving lunatic, then let her go and scream. Zhu Yan was calm and decided to find out whose canvas it was, thinking that it was the author who painted it. On the canvas was Zhu Ling's name. Meng Meng immediately angrily said that it belonged to Zhu Ling, suspecting that So somehow involved in all of this. Zhu Yan suggested that her friend talk to Zhu Ling. She also reminded her that she hadn't been at school for three days already. Meng Meng recalled that when she called her, she said she was sick and had been vacationing in a rented apartment for the past two days. Meng Meng was stunned. She suspected something and remembered about the disc. Zhu Yan tore up the monster picture after her friend's words. After Zhu Yan tore up the painting, she offered to check on the sick girl and take care of her. A car with the girls stopped outside a store in a nearby neighborhood. Zhu Yan unbuckled her seatbelt and asked her friend to find a parking spot first. The red-haired beauty opened the passenger door, tapping her heels on the pavement. Zhu Yan looked around the store they came to and headed over there. It was a tool store. It wasn't clear why a girl like that would want to go there. Entering the store, Zhu Yan started looking for the tools she needed for her business. After a short selection, she placed a hammer, ropes, duct tape, and a knife on the register. She asked the guy behind the cash register to punch it all in and counter purchases. 
The cashier didn't recognize the girl and thought she was new to their neighborhood. He decided to make a joke and said that this set looked like she wanted to kidnap someone. Juyan took off her sunglasses and looked at the guy. The girl ironically said that she was really going to kidnap someone because normal people can't just buy all this stuff. The guy was surprised and wondered if tools were needed if all the kidnappers in the world were as beautiful as Juyan. He also thought that if it was him, he would willingly follow the girl. The cashier punched in the last item, which was a knife. The guy calculated the girl and offered a 40% discount and offered to add him on Wetch Hat and asked if she was interested in home delivery. The girl scanned a QR code and paid for her purchases without a discount from the guy. As Ju Yan left, she arrogantly said that the guy's discount was only $100, and if she added someone who seriously didn't meet her dress code to her contacts, she wouldn't be able to hide her faces. The action shifts to a property management office where a man calls someone on the phone and gets no answer. The man told the girls that no one was picking up the phone, and Ju Yan was telling the guy that Julina was sick and didn't come to school, and wasn't picking up the phone from anyone, and the girls were afraid something had happened to her. The man said he couldn't help as all tenant issues are confidential and it was better for the girls to call Julian's parents. Zhu Yan immediately evaluated the guy, looking at his photos and credentials. He concluded that the man is communicative, responsible, trusted by his owners, likes to help others, and has a daughter. Zhu Yan thought of something after looking around the man's workstation. Zhu Yan started to press for pity, saying that Zhu Ling's parents are abroad, and the girl herself was cheated by some scumbag, and now she's depressed and having suicidal thoughts, and if they call the police, she'll get worse. Juyan started trembling and was about to cry, saying that this was her best friend and she was worried about her, and if she killed herself, her parents wouldn't survive it. Meng Meng immediately remembered her friend's words and thought it was from a drama they had watched together a few days ago. The girl asked if they could, so as not to bother the manager just stand at her closed door. The man was touched by the girl's words and believed it, after which he called them with him and said he would look for the keys. Meng Meng was surprised at her friend's acting talents. She looked at her with admiring eyes. The man had already called the apartment where Ju Lin was supposed to live. He asked Miss Ju if she was home, then repeated his question and kept ringing the bell. Meng Meng asked her friend in a whisper how she realized that Ju Lin wouldn't pick up the phone, because if she answered, she would not only expose them but also scare them off. Ju Yan explained that their future victim is just as cowardly as Meng Meng, and wouldn't even dare to come out of the house and confirm that the curse had been transferred to them. Ju Yan also asked if Meng Meng would have been able to pick up the phone if that ghost had called her. The girl said in a trembling voice that she was even afraid to hear the ringtone. That's why her phone has been off since yesterday. She's afraid someone will tell her about the seven days again. Juyan continued to talk and fear. She added that every little thing makes them panic. Worth it is a little different from the norm. Later, the girl noticed that the man found the key. Juyan asked her friend, Now does she understand why the red-haired beauty is the head and she is only a follower? Meng Meng realized that her friend, although she looks pompous, but she can face problems and solve them, especially in terrible situations that can't be understood. She looks very responsible. The door lock clicked and the man said the door was open. Ju Yan pushed the guy and suggested that her friend split up to find Ju Ling. The surprise man shouted out to the girls, asking them what they were doing. Meng Meng opened one door with a loud slam. Ju Yan was opening the other one. They did everything quickly. The man tried to stop the girls, but one of them found Ju Lin. She was wrapped in a blanket, shivering and badly frightened. The girls came up to her as well, and Meng Meng called her a bastard. Ju Lin herself turned around to see who had come to her. When she saw Ju Yan's face, she immediately burst out of the blanket and started screaming. The man stood up for the girl. He said that no one would come closer to her and asked why Ju Lin was so scared. Are they really friends? Ju Yan pulled out the movie disc and assured the man that they were definitely friends. He could ask her that. Ju Ling hid behind the man's leg and looked at the disc in Ju Yan's hands with horror. The man asked the shivering girl if she was okay and added that he would call the police right away. Ju Yan held the disc in her hands and told Ju Ling that now it's very easy to copy the video online and send it to her parents, brothers, sisters, and even Jin from their art club can watch it. Ju Ling hesitated for a long time. She knew it was better not to mess with the ghost. But Ju Yan too, she could finish her off in a couple of minutes. The frightened Ju Ling said in a trembling voice that these were her friends. The man walked away and thought that she was too scared. And he too, nowadays, the prettier the girl, the scarier she becomes. The door slammed shut and a man could be heard closing it from the inside. Ju Yan immediately rushed towards Ju Lin on her heels. She pounced on the girl and flung her to the floor with a loud clatter. Ju Ling tried to resist and asked to be released. And Ju Yan told her accomplice not to stand still and to bring a rope to tie the girl up. Meng Meng was also very frightened by all this, but agreed with her friend and went to get her tools. 
The sounds of blows and the girls trying to get Ju Lin into a chair could be heard. Ju Yan began to wrap a rope around Ju Ling and tighten it. Tightening it, she began tying knots so the girl would definitely not be able to get out. Ju Lin sat tied up and unable to move. She began to roar and yell. Ju Ling said she was very wrong and asked to be released. She reminded that Ju Yan hates Linkian and can show the video to her. Then the curse will be transferred to her. Ju Yan said she knew that if someone else watched the video, the curse would transfer to them, so she would pass it on right away. Ju Yan said that she would be very happy if Ling Qian was away 200 yards away from her, but would rather deal with the person who started it. Meng Meng had already started to play the disc. She put duct tape over Ju Lin's mouth after she started stroking her and said that she didn't expect this from her friend. She was the first one who came to her mind when she was looking for a scapegoat. She leaned closer to the girl's ear and quietly said it was breaking her heart. The TV turned on and the interference scene began. Lin tried to close her eyes so she wouldn't see it, but Ju Yan used the fingers of her hand to open them so the girl could see everything. Ju Lin was untied after watching the ill-fated video and received a call on her phone. Someone kept calling the girl from an unknown number, Lin herself not really wanting to pick up the phone. An ominous beep from the phone in the middle of the room silenced all the girls. Ju Yan looked at what Ju Lin was about to do. A frightened Ju Lin reached for the phone with trembling hands and answered the call. Ju Yan tried to stand over the girl who was in tears listening to the monster's words. Ji Ling continued to roar and listen to the ghost. The other girls heard nothing. Ju Yan watched with interest, waiting to see what Lin would answer. Quiet squeaks could only be heard by Ju Yan, but then the girl turned around and started looking at her with her red eyes with a smile. Ju Ling happily said that the transmission of the curse had failed, and the monster said he was looking for Ju Yan. Ju Yan stood there and listened to the girl's words without paying much attention to them. The ghost tells Lin that he hates Ju Yan much more and wants to settle the score with her specifically, so the curse is lifted from Lin and Meg, but will stay with the red-haired girl. The girl joyfully started laughing and saying that she had succeeded in breaking the curse. She was relieved to say that she could move on with her life. Ju Ling didn't end there and said that hatred had consumed Ju Yan, and passing the curse on her was the right thing to do. Ju Yan didn't reply anything to this, and just gloomily looked towards Lin. Lin covered his mouth with his hand and thought about what he said. He asked himself to keep his cool and calm down. If Ju Yan was already definitely going to die, he would decide to take revenge on her. Ju Yan did not believe the girl's words and said that she was crazy because it was easier to deny everything than to desperately wait for her death. Just then, the phone started ringing from the woman's purse. All the girls together took notice. The phone continued to ring loudly, waiting for a response from the owner. Ju Yan realized that it was her phone, and believed Ju Ling's words. The ugly ghost is really following her. She was angry. You could tell by the look on her face that she wasn't happy. But she reached for her phone anyway. The voice on the phone told Ju Yan that there were six days left. Meng stood there unable to believe that the curse no longer affected her. Ju Yan didn't flinch and began to humiliate the ghost, saying that he finally learned to speak human, but still her accent is very bad. Meng pointed to Ju Yan talking to the monster and asked Lin, Does she see it too? Ju Yan was not at all intimidated by the ghost's words. She continued to say derogatory things to him. She said that her contacts have a dress code and the monster obviously doesn't pass into it. The two girls looked at it frightenedly and realized that their friend was being too harsh with the monster. Dropping the phone, Ju Yan turned around towards the girls. A very aggressive Ju Yan asked the girls to wipe the silly expressions off their faces and added not to think that if only she was the ghost's target, they could be arrogant. The girls saw something scary in Ju Yan, and Lin had already denied her involvement in it all. Ju Yan put the phone to her ear. The girl was calling someone. Even after talking to the ghost, her face was very calm. She called her father and asked for the number of the handyman who cleaned the office building. Afterwards, she said that when she talked about being robbed, her father misremembered. There is a girl in her class who does sinister, and also she asked her father for a million. Mung poured the wine while looking at the girls and thought that if the curse didn't concern her anymore, it was worth it to leave. But watching Ju Ling receive from Ju Yan for their suffering was a paddle. Meng headed over to the table where the girls were sitting and offered Ju Yan a glass of wine to calm down a bit. Ju Yan, with a glass in her hands, asked Ju Lin where the ghost came from. The girl also threatened that if she missed any information, she would use the rest of her days to make Lin regret not dying. Lin spoke cautiously. She told me that on Labor Day this year she had been in an accident on the highway. There were explosions and a big fire at the scene. Twenty people died in total. In her memoirs, the girl said that only two people managed to survive, and she was one of them. At first she thought it was an accident, and after that it would be over, because many people experience such events in their lives. Ju Yan interrupted the girl's story and placed her glass on the table with a clatter, nearly breaking it. 
She didn't care about the backstory. She said she only had six days left, which meant time was precious. Julian understood the girl's mood and hurriedly explained that she had received the CD last Thursday and had been watching it like a hypnotized person. But afterwards, she not only received a call, but a strange object appeared in front of her that only she could see. It said that the girl was supposed to die in that accident, but she was chosen by the ghost. Life no longer belonged to Lynn. She was forced into this game to reclaim it. She was very scared. She didn't even dare to think about it. And then the screen disappeared, and the only thing the girl recognized was that the ghost was in charge in this game. The wine that Juyan poured in her direction flew into Lin's face. Juyan told Lin that she should have died anyway, but decided to find a scapegoat. She also rightly pointed out that the ugly ghost was after her. Lin started crying again and said that she had nothing to do. She was young and didn't want to die, especially since she had to go through these few stressful days. The girl also said that the ghost on the third day entered her dreams and was already there scaring Lin. The ghost continued to scare her, and the next day she unconsciously went to art class and drew her portrait scared to death. Lin immediately realized that they had started looking for her after finding the drawing in the art class. Juyan didn't reply anything, and just grudgingly asked Ju Ling to continue her story. After all this, Lin hid at home, but when she ordered a delivery, she saw the courier's face turn into that of a ghost. She became very scared and survived only on food from the refrigerator. On the sixth day, she took a watermelon from the refrigerator, but when she started eating it, it turned out to be her head, and she was eating her brains. Lin vomited from the terrible memories, but she continued the story. The girl realized that the seventh day would be the last. That's why she sent the disc. Juyan listened to this story but did not show any emotion, only biting her lip. Juyan asked that that was the end of it. The ghost had no physical contact with the girl in any way, but Lin wondered why she didn't ask why she had sent the disc to her. Juyan didn't answer anything and just waited to hear about the physical contact with the ghost. Receiving the answer that the ghost didn't touch Lin, Juyan smiled. Juyan stood up and motioned for Meng to leave, but a surprise Ju Ling didn't understand how she could not care about the fate of her life. The girls looked at Juyan's back and both assured that no one but them would know about it or dare to tease. Juyan heard this and stopped, preparing to say something. The girl asked to do the opposite. The more people who knew about it, the better. If the whole school wasn't aware of it, in two days she would ask them. Meng and Lin were whispering amongst themselves. They thought the girl was going to die soon and wanted to prove to everyone that she was better at the expense of rumors. Meng began to gather the torture tools the girls had brought with them. Meng said she didn't want to leave it all with Lin. Who knows what she would decide to secretly try something risky. Lin immediately started to get upset, proving that Xiaoming's words break her heart, and she never wished anything bad for her. They are friends, and nothing would have happened if she wasn't with Juyan at that moment. Meng decided not to take the girl's word for it, and asked the girl how old she was if she thought anyone would fall for it. Lin said that Meng was afraid that the girl would reveal all of Meng's nefarious deeds. But Xiaoming said that even considering Ju Yan's bad character, she would be able to find a solution to the problem instead of just transferring the curse to the innocent. In the courtyard of Ju Yan's house, the weather was beautiful and bird singing could be heard. In such a beautiful setting, Ju Yan sat at the table and read something on her laptop with interest. She opened an article from the breaking news that said the campus goddess Ju Yan stumbles upon a ghost. The girl read the comments and swept up Xi Xiaomen and Ju Ling's efficiency. Just then, one of the workers came over and told Juyan that Master Shi had arrived, then led him over to the girl. The girl turned around in surprise to see her guest, but then she smiled and realized that she had summoned it herself. In front of Juyan stood a man with long hair and wearing a suit. The girl opened the lid of the kettle while the guest watched the ghost video. Juyan gently and carefully poured tea into mugs for herself and Master Shi, who had already finished watching. The man watched the video and called the girl's case rare, hinting that he had not encountered such a thing before. A concerned girl was handing a cup of tea to a guest and asked the one what it could mean. The master was drinking tea and said that most normal ghosts appear to a person to mentally appease them. Nowadays, they don't use anything like that. All he has met are confused souls who are striving for something. But this case is different. The man asked if the ghost harbors hatred towards her. Juyan was surprised that the master really did know quite a lot and asked him what could be the ways to solve this problem. The master said that this situation is very difficult to solve when the vengeful spirit comes back to pay off debts. Then it can't be stopped. The main problem is that Juyan doesn't know why the ghost hates her. But he will help. Only he needs a hefty fee. Juyan swept up that the master not only had exceptional looks, but also had no doubts when it came to the price. But as long as she had a chance to save herself, then she wouldn't spare any money. Juyan assured the master that she had a principal and would not let them lose a penny for their work when hiring people. The master said it was too late and he would rid the girl of the spirit tomorrow at noon, 
but for now from now on he would stay close by to protect the girl until the evil was gone. It was already evening in Zhuyan's room. The light did not stop burning, which meant the girl was awake. The girl was looking at her phone and decided that if she stayed awake at night and sat on her phone, she would keep herself safe. But her eyelids were very heavy and it was hard to stay awake, though she tried very hard. She kept telling herself she couldn't fall asleep, repeated it several times, but her eyes did close. A loud scream rang through the house as if someone was being stabbed. It could be heard even outside. The girl shook herself and immediately opened her eyes in fear. She thought it was a ghost. She was confused, but woke up and realized that it was Master Xi's voice. She swung open the door to the bathroom from where she'd heard the scream. She saw Master Xi lying on the mat and twitching. The girl tried to call out to him. The guy said he was playing a mobile game and he wasn't doing well. Afterwards, he decided to go and wash his face to wake up a bit. But after he washed his face, he saw something black and big. As he wiped those faces, he realized it was something strange and it looked more like hair than a towel. The guy slapped his hair out of fright and the girl's face was pointed right at him. Juyan was confused by the guy's reaction, so she asked how could he being a ghost hunter be afraid of them. The boy persisted, saying that until that moment he had never thought that ghosts existed in their world. Juyan immediately realized that this was just an ordinary trickster who was trying to profit from her. There was silence and the guy obediently sat on his knees, and Juyan asked him, how could he an ordinary rogue gain such popularity? The guy explained that he just hasn't been afraid of the dark and jumping out scarecrows since he was a kid and he would stay in houses with evil spirits for days and people would feel relieved. And when he grew up, he decided to make it a source of income. Juyan asked, Was everything the guy said about the vengeful spirit just an assumption to be used for other people? The guy realizing his guilt said honestly that he exaggerated in order to raise his price. The guy very frightened explained that he hadn't thought about meeting spirits, and this was the first time he was seeing them in reality. He said that he would not do it anymore although he was ashamed to leave such a beautiful girl to die. But it was not in his power to help her with her spirit. He wished Juyan all the best and ran away. Juyan herself didn't want to just let the rogue go, so she grabbed him by his shirt. The guy stopped, but told the girl that there were some people she wouldn't be able to stop. He turned around and said he was aware of the fear the girl appeared to have. But Master Shi added that he is much more afraid and his teammates are waiting for him, which means he can't die. Juyan took hold of the guy's shoulder and asked the guy where he was going after taking the advance. The girl started yelling at the guy and threatening him that if he dared to leave, she would complain to her father and he would expose his business, and then she would call the police and say he was harassing her, and then she would find someone who would break the guy's legs and put him in a bag and throw him away. The guy stood there trying to think about the situation he was in and the girl kept talking. This time she said that after the ghost appeared she recorded everything around her. She added that all the CCTV cameras work in the house which means he wouldn't be able to do anything to her. She thought it was for a ghost but had to use it on a human. The guy asked what he'd done so wrong in the past, then said the ghost was just crazy for choosing to get involved with such a bitch. In Juyan's house the rogue had to stay and endure all the scares. Juyan lay in bed next to her phone and tablet and slept soundly despite her worries. She had a dream where she was sitting in the ghost's seat, just like in that video, and brushing her hair. She opened her eyes, but still remained in her dream. She knew immediately what was up when she saw herself in the mirror with a comb in her hands. The scallop fell to the floor from the girl's hands, making a loud noise to the entire room. The girl got up from her chair, which also fell down following the comb, and Juyan was left standing in front of the mirror. The frightened Juyan didn't understand where she was or what was wrong with her, so she shouted at the top of her voice, What's going on here? A fan was spinning above her head and she covered her nose, smelling some odor that was getting stronger. She saw the white shirts in the closet and headed leisurely toward it. She examined the white shirts in her closet. Later, she saw a TV that had static from the beginning of the video. She recognized the place and realized she was in the room of the creepy ghost from the video. The girl heard a loud and unpleasant creak and turned around at the sound to see who was in the room with her. Turning around, she saw the door. It was the door from which the unpleasant creak was coming. By the sounds of it, it felt like someone was standing outside the door trying to get in. She held her breath, and though she was a little afraid, she still dared to walk over and look through the gap on the door. She saw the silhouette of a ghost walking slowly towards her, creaking the floor beneath her feet. She ran away from the door and caught her foot on the floor in her haste and lost her balance. The shirt she'd managed to grab onto flew off. The girl was grabbing at the hangers in her closet, and in fear she couldn't even realize what she was doing. The ghost stood outside the door, enjoying the fact that now he could scare the bitch half to death, or she wouldn't deserve the name of Vengeful Ghost if she succeeded. The ghost grabbed the doorknob and was getting ready to go inside to scare the girl. She poked her head through the doorway and asked the girl if she was hiding, and assured her that she would look for her. The ghost's terrifying red eyes tried to find the girl across the room, but then one of the shirts flew past the monster, knocking it to the ground. 
Zhu Yan succeeded in scaring the ghost herself. She collapsed, screaming in the doorway. The ghost appeared to have weakened and lay motionless on the threshold. The red-haired beauty herself watched him from the corner of the closet, not understanding what had just happened. Zhu Yan apparently wasn't too frightened and headed towards the ghost, teasing the monster in every way possible. First, she suggested that she stop howling, and then asked her what was she afraid of if she was a ghost herself. The ghost listened to Zhu Yan's humiliating words and looked at the girl with his red eyes. She asked why such an inhuman creature exists. Afterwards, he lowered his eyes to the floor, realizing that scaring Zhu Yan wouldn't work. The ghost, almost in tears, asked herself who that other ghost was. The people she used to pull in felt despair, as if they had fallen into darkness, subjected to psychological pressure on her part until the sun rose. The ghost didn't understand why Zhu Yan wasn't afraid of her anyway. And the girl herself asked why the ghost was crying, and assumed that the ghost was just jealous of her, and continued to mock the monster. It was as if the ghost began to shift, and crack his fingernails on the wooden floor of the room. The girl continued to taunt, and told the ghost to take her shirt off the fan, but then remembered her short legs, and offered to help. Zhu Yan noticed the ghost's changes and fell into a stupor. She tried to figure out what was going on. She realized that she had insulted the monster so much that it began to transform. The monster's eyes looked less and less like human eyes and its teeth became like a shark's, and the monster began to growl. Spikes of ghost hair broke the already half-living door. The ghost tried to hit Juyan with his new hair, but he couldn't hit the girl. Juyan thought that she was too passive. She got shortness of breath. A shoebox fell in front of Juyan, which the ghost dropped on top of her and prepared to strike. Despite the monster's speed, Juyan was able to dodge the ghost's hands and tried to walk into her back. The girl did well and was able to get on her opponent's back and increase the distance. Juyan examined the items at hand and tried to make some weapons out of them to fight off the ghost or counter-strike but the monster's hair was wrapped around her leg. The ghost lifted the girl up and laughed loudly. The sight of her was very creepy. Juyan turned around to face her rival. The latter in turn opened her mouth and continued to growl and laugh. Despite being shackled by the monster's hair, Juyan managed not to be confused and delivered a knee strike to the demon's jaw. The ghost clearly didn't expect such resistance. Her body flew far backwards and she stumbled to the uneven floor. Juyan decided not to stop there and headed towards the monster to give it another punch to the face. Juyan saw that the ghost was lying down and decided to walk over to make sure of her victory. The ghost still tried to resist, but Juyan crushed her with her foot. There was some liquid on Juyan's hands that was left behind after the fight with the monster. The liquid in the girl's hands was very sticky and unpleasant to the touch. Juyan looked at the defeated ghost and thought to herself that this was unforgivable. Juyan reached for the high stiletto shoe that was lying next to the ghost. The angry Zhu Yan swung at the ghost and asked the one why she didn't wash her face. The ghost called out for help and asked the girl to stay away from her. But Zhu Yan beat her with her heel and spoke of the monster's horrible appearance and her rotten teeth. There was blood running down the floor from hitting the ghost, and Zhu Yan started comparing the monster to Sadako saying that the latter was beautiful. She also said that the ghost was imitating actress Chu Renmei, and she ended by saying that the ghost can't stand on the same stage with her. Zhu Yan stopped beating the ghost and asked the one how she dared to throw a challenge at her again. She also called the monster useless trash. The ghost lay defeated, growling and trying to raise his right trembling arm. She touched the mirror and it hissed. The monster escaped from Juyan and entered the mirror while the girl escorted him with her gaze. A surprise Juyan asked what it was that worked like that, and just a couple seconds later and there was no sign of the ghost. The creepy woman didn't leave completely and appeared in the mirror instead of her reflection. She took on a threatening look again and tried to tell Juyan that she would definitely die on the seventh day. The red-haired beauty did not listen to the words of the creepy spirit and simply threw the shoe she used to beat the ghost into the mirror. It was apparent that the girl wasn't much afraid of threats from the one she was able to defeat. The morning in Zhu Yan's house after the nightmare dream with the monster surprisingly started off calmly. Fake Master Shi watched the housekeeper feed Zhu Yan breakfast. The guy decided to play a little joke on Zhu Yan and said the last time he saw anyone being fed was his niece, who was less than three years old and the disabled daughter of one of his clients. Zhu Yan was distracted by the guy's witty banter but decided not to answer and just said that she had a nightmare with a ghost last night. The guy shamed himself a little and looked at the girl with a frustrated look. The guy asked Zhu Yan if she had any plans. He obviously wanted to offer her something. Master Shi offered the girl to become a ghost hunter. He promised a good income, and with her skill to deal with spirits with her bare hands, they would be swimming in money. Zhu Yan asked the guy if he was definitely awake and reminded him that this posh mansion he was in now belonged to her. She was also perplexed as to why she would want someone who would drag her down if she even wanted to take up ghost hunting. The town outside the small cafe was bustling with life. People passing by, chatting, buses driving, and waiters wiping tables after customers. 
Inside, Zhu Yan was sitting with her friends. Zhu Ling was drawing something and asked if she did okay. Considering the girl's wishes, Lin tried to portray the monster as ugly as possible. Even though Lin said it would turn out to be an ugly monster, but the girl's ghost looked pretty cute. Meng wondered if it was definitely a ghost, and Zhu Yan started rubbing her hands, which made Lin nervous. The girl nervously said that if she didn't like something, she could redo it. Zhu Yan praised Lin, and added that her friend was indeed very talented in art, and everything turned out exactly as she wanted it to. Lin was reassured by Zhu Yan's satisfied reaction and was glad that the beauty liked everything. Zhu Yan motioned the drawing towards Liquian and asked her to scan it, come up with a title, and post it on all platforms. Zhu Yan explained the topic of the post. She wants there to be a vote for the ugliest of the ten ghost girls in horror movies. She also added that Liquian should control it. The girls kept listening to Zhu Yan's plan. She said that she needed people to Photoshop the photos, but they should not be scary but funny. The three best entries would get a prize of two to ten thousand from her. Zhu Yan didn't end there. She explained to the girls that she wanted it to be on everyone's lips, and then they should wait for her notice tomorrow. Liquian resented Zhu Yan's plan, and told the other one, and asked the other one what was all this for. Did she really stumble upon something? Future media personality Liquian stood up from her desk and asked indignantly if the news club would be used for pranks. Zhu Yan said it would take a while to spread, so Liquian has better things to do than to give her an interrogation. Well, only if she wants to get to her party on Saturday. The girl pondered all the consequences if she missed the party and muttered something to herself, trying to get over her pride and ego. Likian walked away from the girls and continued to mutter bad words to herself about Zhu Yan. The red-haired beauty asked Lin to pass her the grapes and she quickly agreed. Lin took a grape berry on her fork for Zhu Yan. Zhu Yan opened her mouth and prepared to accept the delicious berry, but then something stopped her. She saw something eerie and realized that the ghost was here now. Instead of Lin, there was a silhouette of a ghost holding out a fork full of grapes to her. Zhu Yan realized that the ghost appeared everywhere, taking people by surprise. After the fifth day, the demon became stronger. The girl had a real hatred for the annoying spirit and wanted to deal with her. Although the very appearance of the creepy girl did not scare her. Zhu Ling asked what was wrong, not understanding why her friend wasn't eating the grapes she had asked for. Meanwhile, in the monster's hands, the grapes changed to an eye. Zhu Yan kept thinking, how far would the demon be able to go? Is it capable of sending hallucinations or influencing other people's actions? What if the ghost could make other people attack the girl? Zhu Yan refused the offer and asked Lin to eat the grapes herself. The naive artist didn't realize what she had done wrong again and thought that Zhu Yan was very difficult to satisfy. Lin put a grape on her tongue and Zhu Yan watched the monster eat her eye. The sight was not a good one, but the girl tried not to give any sign with her gaze, even though she herself was now watching the monster eat a human eye. The ghost started crunching his eye. It looked very nasty and disgusting. Zhu Yan plunged into her thoughts and came to the conclusion that the ghost had finally gone insane. The scene the girl now saw was far worse than all the torture before. She also thought that there were a lot of people in the school now, and it was clearly not good for her. Zhu Yan got up from the table and asked her to cover her in front of the teachers and follow Likian. Afterwards, she thought that if the ghost did something to the traffic light, people might get hurt, so she asked Xiao Meng to take her home. The girl walked confidently toward the exit and decided to herself that she had gained one goal. She needs to stay alive and live to see the seventh and final day when the ghost appears. Xiao Men, as promised, drove her friend home from class at her request. Xiao Meng also decided to ask her friend if she had said that the ghost after the fifth day could come at any time to scare the girl. Master Xi, whom Zhu Yan had left at home, was also here. He arrogantly asked if the girl missed him while she hadn't seen him since morning. Zhu Yan didn't pay attention to the pushy guest but simply walked on and started asking the ghost to show itself. The girl opened the refrigerator and wondered if she needed to buy some watermelons or basketballs for the demon. Zhu Yan asked the ghost not to be shy and show up right now like she did in school. Maybe she should use nicknames for that and then she would show up. The girl started shouting insults towards the monster along the lines of monster, rotten teeth, old fingernails and so on. Later, she looked at Master Shi and Xiao Meng and suggested that the ghost should possess either of them while the pair stood frightened at Zhu Yan, summoning the monster herself. Zhu Yan didn't understand where the ghost had disappeared to and assumed aloud that she was still fiddling with Julina. The girl walked over to the TV, sat right down and turned on that very video. She sat close to the screen on a chair and paused the video. Zhu Yan got to the moment where the girl is brushing her hair and told her that everything is fine, and she knows that even if the monster doesn't come out, she can still see and hear her already from the TV screen broadcast by Zhu Yan herself. She said that while she can't see the ghost, she thinks she is talking to the air. The ghost girl froze in front of the TV in her creepy room and kept listening to Zhu Yan, who said that the monster was just unhappy because she was locked in that room and had to confront her problems. 
The ghost was diligently trying not to move or show any sign while listening to the humiliation from Zhu Yan. Zhu Yan continued to talk about the ghost's desire to be like Sadako, and suggested that the latter become a slander star. But the creepy demon continued to hold on, but the ghost couldn't completely refrain, and still averted her gaze slightly towards the TV to see what Zhu Yan would show her. They were pictures on a clipboard drawn by Lin for the vote. Under the pictures were unflattering comments from other people who also pointed out the girl's flaws, her ugly nails, teeth, chin, nose, and eyes. The ghost probably didn't like this assessment of her appearance, but the creepy girl kept reading everything. Every minute the comments were harsher and more filled with insults, with people writing that it was a bad plastic surgery practice and comparing it to ugly girls. All the students in the school saw the vote and forwarded it to each other and wrote comments. Even in one of the classrooms, the kids were not paying attention to the teacher but were busy writing comments and forwarding these pictures to each other. Zhu Yan swept the ghost shaking she clearly has good actor's tasks. Later the girl mockingly said that now the monster can't move in her invincible pause mode. Master Shi Ai Xiaomeng stood there and realized that Zhu Yan was able to melt the brains of even a ghost. The red-haired beauty suggested to the ghost that she shouldn't be angry about the bad things that are said to her. These pranks are everywhere now and you shouldn't be afraid of bad comments. You should be afraid that everyone will forget about it. Juyan continued to show off the photoshopped pictures of the ghost, first as the Mona Lisa, with her poignant comments about the monster's smile. She also showed a picture of a ghost climbing out of the latrine, disheveling her hair. Juyan's jokes were sharper and sharper. And the last straw was a picture of a demon holding a piggy in an advertisement for some computer game. The girl's ghost couldn't take it anymore and screamed that she couldn't take it anymore and asked to let herself out. Xiaomen explained to Master Shi that they call it cyberbullying. In Zhu Yan's house, the festive table for her party was already in full swing. The cooks and waiters prepared and spread food on the tables for the girl's birthday. Zhu Yan was sitting in a chair. One worker was showing her a dress and another was massaging her shoulders. The girl herself was talking to her brother on the phone and told him that everything she had would belong to him. The guy was on the basketball court and after hearing what his sister said, thought it wasn't like her, and she couldn't pass on the riches. Shin wasn't shocked for long, and thought that his sister was preparing some kind of trap for him. The guy didn't believe the girl's words, and said that he didn't need Zhu Yan's things. Afterward, he asked if it was a test. Zhu Yan said that Shin could sell all her stuff for a very good price. She also told the guy not to run off anywhere this summer, and if mom and dad came back, he should treat them properly. Zhu Yan seemed as if she had remembered something during her conversation with her brother. The girl said that she had a box under the closet in her room and if she didn't regret and called the day after tomorrow, the guy should help return the box to Lushiuki. Shin asked her sister why she was doing everything like this, as if she was finishing things before she died. Zhu Yan herself put her palm on her face and asked herself why her dumb brother becomes smart at such critical moments. Zhu Yan asked what Shin meant after all, the guy surnamed Lu is a living person, not a monster, and should not be feared. Shin reminded the girl how she had called Lushiuki a pervert and only a blind man would trust him. After the guy asked his sister, did she forget the reason for her change? Why did she pack up and go abroad? The girl decided not to argue with her brother. He said he was just giving instructions and added that she would return for summer vacation. Shin himself asked maybe he should come. Shin tried to say something else to his sister, but she hurriedly dropped it, not listening to her brother. Zhu Yan pulled the earpiece out of her ear after talking to her brother. While the hairdresser was doing her hair for the holiday, the girl herself was looking at something on her phone screen. She read flattering comments about her contest. People wrote thanking her and asking for them to be held more often. The girl herself also wrote that this monster has been bothering her and Zhu Yan doesn't know how she got her address and phone number. Today is the sixth day, and although she knows that the spirit's words are lies, but deep down she is still scared. Immediately the girl wrote back insults towards the ghost and people continued to discuss the spirit's horrible appearance. Zhu Yan herself smiled in response to such reactions. Zhu Yan wrote about her worries and said she didn't know what could happen, so she should probably cancel the party until everything is resolved, a couple people replied to her. Master Shi entered the girl and told the girl that she relied on the abundant yang energy from all the people to keep the ghost at bay. Afterward, he interestedly showed the girl's messages on his phone and asked the one why so much alcohol, if they got drunk, wouldn't that create the perfect chance for the ghost to attack the girl? Zhu Yan explained that there was a reason for this. Alcohol would help people not get scared at the sight of a ghost. Master Shi said that this is by far the best way. Expose the ghost of the place full of people. On the seventh day there will be so many people that the ghost and will not be able to reach Zhu Yan. Although it will not work for long. Zhu Yan took the party invitation and twirled it in her hands for a long time, looking at it and thinking. She turned toward Master Shi and held out a piece of paper to him. 
The guy took the invitation in his hands and asked what Juyan was planning this time. He was greatly embarrassed by it. The girl explained to the overjoyed guy to just take when given. Also, Juyan said that despite threats and bribery, Master Shi supported her during those few days. The guy looked at the girl and could not find words of gratitude. He knew he had deceived her, but she still did not call the police. Juyan looked very angry. She asked if this ghost really hoped to take her life. After all, she would disobey and become a vengeful spirit herself, and by then they would all become ghosts and she would not lose to the monster. Master Shi started praising the girl and saying how courageous and brave she was, and Juyan herself asked him to stop after she ordered him to do as she ordered. Master Shi was startled by the girl's words. He asked what she was trying to do and added that Juyan shouldn't think that she can do everything just because she has money. At Juyan's house, the celebration had already started. The house was lit up outside and it was obvious that the party was in full swing. Music was playing, young people were drinking, dancing and having fun. Master C stood by the students and said that wealth does make you cooler. Also the guy added that he has been to a couple of parties in the entertainment industry, thrown by interns and they are nothing compared to this one. The guys asked C how he could compare the expelled interns from the university to them. Some guy was playing cards with his girlfriend, there was everything in the house, everyone could party however they wanted. The sorority girls said that they are high achieving students with exceptional looks. Another girl said that even the guys coming here are very talented, and since they are at the top of the university, they are not easy to get to. Master Shi also praised the girls, saying that they live up to the name of the sorority. What Chu Yan did for them, they are top class. Someone started tapping on a glass to get his attention. Everyone immediately fell silent and focused their attention, expecting to hear something important. It was the birthday girl Zhu Yan who was wearing a fancy dress and she thanked everyone for coming to her birthday party. The red-haired birthday girl said the fake ghost promised to take her life on the seventh day because of her climbing out of the TV, so Zhu Yan suggested a countdown to summon her just like New Year's Eve. Master C and everyone else looked admiringly at the brave girl. She was simply gorgeous this evening. The future elite of the society were already very drunk, their eyes were double-visioned, and they decided to unite to greet the ghost for the one and only Yang Yang. A crowd of drunken youth stood in front of the TV and began his report with a one. Meng and Lin stood anxiously. They realized that the monster was real, but they still continued with the report. Here the hand of the clock struck midnight, which meant that the seventh day had already begun. The TV turned on, some shuddered, and some didn't even pay attention to the interference. Master Shi turned towards the TV, while Zhu Yan herself looked into it and realized that something was about to happen. Bell immediately said that the monster had heard them and was on its way. The picture on the screen flashed, this time the dark and creepy room replaced by a well. The crowd of drunken youths immediately turned their gaze toward the television screen. A creak was heard, and the fingers of the ghost girl's hands appeared and she was climbing out of the well. After the hands with crackling and creepy sounds, half of the creepy girl's torso also came out and she kept saying that she was going after Juyan. The crowd of drunken students were almost all staring at the TV screen by now, and Master Shi assumed that what they were seeing would sober them up quickly and run away from here. The birthday girl herself was not afraid of the ghost, but on the contrary, waited for it to come out and asked everyone to shoot it on the phone. The whole noisy crowd fell silent, the house was quiet, and Zhu Yan asked the crowd why they were so surprised. They should have helped the ghost out. Zhu Yan asked the boys to go and help the lady ghost and she and the girls would greet her. The two boys looked at each other for a long time, but still enthusiastically agreed and ran towards the TV. Master C stood puzzled as to how the guys themselves could want to mess with a ghost right now. The guys started to approach the ghost girl climbing out of the TV. Already halfway through the monster being able to get out of the TV screen, a large crowd of guys gathered around her. The guys said they would help the monster now and took her hands to help her get out faster. The girls shouted that the boys were doing great and were excited about their upcoming encounter with the ghost. Finally, the demon stood with her feet on the floor of Zhu Yan's house. The guys held her hands and the entire crowd of students cheered her on, applauding her and bouncing with joy. The surprised ghost girl stood there trying to figure out where she was and who was she, what was she doing here. Everyone started taking pictures of the ghost and making videos, saying they would send to their friends and family to show the exciting party. A girl in the crowd said it's enough for her to brag about her whole life, and she's sure she'll get tens of thousands of fans. One of the guys started taking pictures with the ghost and asked her to look at the camera. One girl asked the ghost not to hide in the back, for her face would appear huge in the photo. She asked, the one who doesn't know rule number one when taking pictures with her sisters. The girl also said that the ghost can't play its evil tricks on her, and asked her to point two fingers at the camera as she did. Master Shi looked at the student's behavior and thought that they don't know what they are doing. Tomorrow morning when they sober up, they will be in such shock that their lives will be shortened. One guy was already pretty drunk and decided to see if he could touch the ghost, thinking his hand should go through. 
Ghost realized that such posturing by the youth made her envious of them. One sorority girl approached the ghost and began to examine her. Afterward, she suggested Ju Yan to make her a member of the sorority, the girl saying that in their days, it was necessary to have someone like that, since no one had ever used a ghost before. Ju Yan sat surrounded by her girlfriends with a glass of wine and saw how the students treated the monster. The red-haired beauty contemplated the offer to admit the ghost into the sorority. The ghost's face was excited and hopeful. She thought people might be able to accept her. After briefly thinking about it, Ju Yan looked at the ghost again and confidently answered no. She looked at the confident Ju Yan who was drinking wine and didn't understand why she didn't take the opportunity and run away from the ghost. Their sorority girl kept insisting. She said that this unusual opportunity would make them famous and Ju Yan as their chapter should be responsible for it. Ju Yan confirmed that as a leader she has the responsibility to take care of her sisters, but having such a rarity as a ghost they can attract attention. Some girls started whimpering and crying, saying that Ju Yan didn't care about them. Ju Yan explained that she was glad that the sisters wanted to brag about it, but they should keep in mind the passing grade. They can't take someone who doesn't obey the basic rules. Ju Yan said that they are a sorority first and foremost, and they don't need ghost fame, but they can invite her to all parties, and the girls agreed with their leader. Ju Yan turned to the ghost. She thanked her for being able to come, but since all the photos were taken and the video was taken, she was no longer needed and could get out of here. The ghost waited for a pause so Jan could finish her sentence and then threw herself at her with best wishes to die. Ju Yan reached into the small slit she had in the couch to pull something out. Ju Yan took out a stun gun and electrocuted the monster while it was about to kill her. Ju Yan looked at the defeated opponent and said that the ghosts were after thunder and yang energy. There was no thunderstorm right now, but electricity worked wonders. The birthday girl asked the guys to get her out of here, but the guys didn't seem to want to do that. The drunk guys said that even though she was a ghost, she was still a girl, which meant they should worry about her wandering around at night and running into bullies, to which Ju Yan suggested that they send her back to where she came from, back to the TV. The ghost came to its senses and opened its eerie red eyes. The ghost girl started struggling, screaming, and begging to be let go. The guys struggled to hold the monster back, saying that she was actually strong. The ghost itself continued to resist. Ju Yan came over and asked her what the show was about. The girl lifted the ghost's face and asked her if she was afraid to go back to the TV. The ghost clearly didn't like that suggestion, and became even angrier at the girl's words. The guys were pushing. They were trying their best to shove the ghost, who was still resisting, back into the TV. Ju Yan asked Master Shi to go and help them shove her back in. The ghost girl was able to free herself from the guy's hands and even tried to kill one of them. But someone grabbed her arm as she swung around. The ghost powers weren't working, and she realized it was all because of Master Shi. He is immune to ghosts, and when someone is near him, she can't use her power. Master Shi suggested to all the assembled boys to send Miss Ghost back home. The guys grabbed the exhausted Madam Ghost and under a countdown report were preparing to send her back into the TV screen. They said goodbye to the demon and sent her back into the TV screen, which is where she crawled out of. Creepy Madam Ghost fell next to the well she climbed out of at midnight. She crawled and vainly asked Ju Yan to come back to her. She repeated it several times. The ghost thought that as long as no one discovered her, then she could climb back out and do something. But Master Shi said it was useless. The guy took hold of the ghost's hair and suggested she accept defeat, since it was already clear who won here. Master Shi approached the creepy ghost's head and said that the player had won and it was undeniable. The girl opened her creepy red eyes. She clearly didn't want to admit defeat. The boy once again told the ghost that she had lost in this fight. The ghost half stayed in the real world and in front of the guy assured him that she would not accept this defeat. The morning in Zhu Yan Mansion began with the screams of the students who were clearly scared of something. One of the girls started screaming throughout the house and woke up the other students who were sleeping off the party. The girl poked her finger at the broken TV screen from where the ghost's body was sticking out and shouted that the ghost woman was dead. The astonished boys shouted that they couldn't believe that the ghost existed. They thought they had imagined everything drunkenly. Everyone shouted dead ghost, some suggested calling the police, some on the contrary said it was a bad idea. Looking at the terrifying face of the ghost, everyone started shouting Ju Yan's name for her to come. The girl heard her name being called and was already running to see. When Ju Yan came in, she saw the dead ghost, but made no comment at first. Ju Yan immediately started screaming, assuming that someone had thought to loot the grave and put the body in the TV. She wondered how she could get her body back now and asked the guys if they had done anything else wrong to her, to which she received an affirmative answer. The guys said that Ju Yan herself pulled her out of the TV, but the girl denied it and said that even cockroaches scare her. Then the youths remembered that they shot a video and took photos yesterday. Students started looking for videos on their phones from last night. Someone even photographed it all on a camera and is now out there looking for guesses as to what might have happened. Everyone threatened to show each other what the students had gotten up to last night. 
but when everyone found a video or photo from their phone, they were all horrified. The youth were shocked at their actions, they seemed sorry and they almost threw up from what they saw. Juyan said she had no recollection of what happened last night, but from what she saw, she shouldn't be blamed. The girl told everyone present that every one of them was mocking the ghost. The guys started to get nervous from this and started yelling at Juyan that she was the one who asked them to do all this. Juyan replied that she may have said something about the ghost, but she had not touched it herself with her own hands. The boys started whispering amongst themselves after the birthday girl's words. One of the girls fainted, and one almost vomited from what she saw. Juyan told the guys that they had obviously had a lot to drink, and if the girl came out of the TV, then she was a ghost, and they didn't have any laws in place to protect ghosts. Immediately, the crowd picked up on Juyan's thought and slightly calmed down and said that it was true, and the girl was right. Juyan continued to flatter the guests. She said that each of them belonged to the elite and were the hope of the society, so they couldn't let a small misunderstanding spoil the bright future. Juyan said that the body could cause trouble, so she takes it upon herself to hide it. The crowd immediately started discussing the photos and videos taken. Some asked for them to be deleted. Some said Juyan would use them for blackmail. But one girl from the public said for Lin Qian to not even think of removing Juyan from the presidency, because they were all in her hands now. Meng and Lin discussed this amongst themselves and realized that now even all the guys were under her control. It turned out that it wasn't the scary ghost chasing her, but she had just found a way to gain power. Some time passed and the morning had already changed to lunch. The birds were also singing outside and the weather was beautiful. The students still hadn't completely sobered up, but shocked and a little drunk started to leave Chuyan Mansion. Heading for the exit, the group of students listened to one guy who said they were very drunk and nothing happened tonight. The guy opened the gate and once again asked all the people to keep their mouths shut and not tell anyone anything, but he didn't notice that there was already someone standing at the entrance. This someone was Juyan's brother. He scared the guy who was instructing his friends. The guy asked the guest who else he was. Everyone stood looking at brother Juyan and one girl remarked that he was handsome. Juyan started to touch the dead ghost's face with her wand and noticed that her corpse is just like a human corpse. When will she be gone? The girl also asked why ghosts leave behind bodies. Her corpse would be dull no problematic. Nervous Master Shi asked Juyan how he could know about such a thing, since he had never seen ghosts. Juyan said she was sure the guy knew all about ghosts. The guy looked at the girl in surprise, searching for something to answer her. He asked the girl how she knew about his knowledge of ghosts. The girl stopped touching the ghost's face and tossed her wand aside. The girl noticed that the ghost was already motionless, and considering her hatred for Juyan and fixation on her death, she was definitely dead already. Also, the red-haired beauty remembered that the guy whispered something to the ghost, and the fact was that he was able to subdue her. The girl said it's pretty obvious and even fools have the power to spot it. She asked Juyan how she knew that by putting the ghost in the TV, they would be able to kill her, to which he got a reply from the girl who said directly that she didn't know about it and treated the situation as a game. She didn't know if it was possible to defeat the ghost and decided to just try. Master Shi decided for himself that this girl was far-sighted in running her organization, and at the same time in matters concerning ghosts, simply following her instincts. The guy took his chin and told the girl that still such sharp intuition exists in the world, to which the offended girl immediately told the guy that he talked a lot, but never introduced himself. Also, she warned him that he can't play with her feelings just because he helped kill a ghost. The guy didn't succeed in sounding cool, and it hurt him a little. He said he was a little more experienced at it, he usually doesn't do this kind of thing. But today, he was lucky enough to be here, and honestly, reserves like him rarely get a chance like this. That's why he lives off others most of the time. Also, she swept up that the girl was able to collect good grades from her last performance, and he believes that she will be generously rewarded for defeating the ghost. Juyan replied that she didn't know what the guy was talking about. She was dragged into all this by Julina. Even if the ghost was targeting her, she still wasn't the original target. So she didn't owe anyone for trying to save herself. Master Shi simply added that it wasn't up to her to decide, and continued to stand next to the girl in front of the ghost corpse. Just then, the couple heard someone call out Juyan and called her sister. It was Shin. He was heartbroken to see the ghost corpse and with a desire to help asked his sister where the shovel was and offered to dig a hole. The remaining students immediately hurriedly ran away when they saw the younger Juyan brother. The girl herself turned around to swipe a glance at the guests running away. Juyan clearly didn't like her brother's arrival and asked the man what he was doing here and reminded him that she had asked him to be a goody-goody and stay home. Shin took offense at his sister's words and explained to her that it was her birthday, and he wanted to surprise her. If he wasn't here, he wouldn't have known about Juyan's problems. He suggested to deal with them first. Also, Shin pointed at Shi and asked his sister what kind of man is that? Could it be her accomplice and he should silence that one? 
Master Shi immediately realized that they were relatives and decided not to stop them from figuring things out. The man hurriedly withdrew and said that the brother and sister had some catching up to do, so he would leave them. Shin realized that the guy knew how to rinse off quickly, and after asking his sister for a shovel, he would do everything for her. Shin turned around to estimate the size of the hole he would have to dig, but sharply shouted. The guy started to examine the TV and asked where the body was. Where could it have gone? Zhuyan sighed in relief and pretended not to understand what body they were talking about. She suggested the guy to rest. She would change her clothes now, and they would go for breakfast. A little time has passed since the corpse went missing and the action shifts to the street. Zhu Yan and his brother were walking down the street and everyone paid attention to them as a fashionable and cute couple. There was some kind of accident, some guy was beating up the driver, and Shin told his sister that he saw them coming out of her mansion. Zhu Yan immediately recognized her friends and watched what was going on. The guys were beating the driver and pointing out to him that he was trying to run away, and he denied everything. Meng lay over the body of Lin who had apparently been hit by the car and sobbed. Zhu Yan immediately as soon as she saw her sorority friends ran towards them. The red-haired girl recognized Zhu Lin, after which Xiao Min assured her that she tried to stop her. Meng explained that it was as if the girl was under someone's control. She stood stone-faced in the middle of the street and refused to move, after which she was hit by a car. Zhu Yan listened to her friend's story with regret and suspected something amiss. Zhu Yan crouched down next to Lin's body and extended her hand to her to check if she was alive. The body appeared breathless, and a screen popped up in front of Zhu Yan where a congratulations to Zhu Ling was written. Player elimination round, you have won in the trial. The girl turned around and saw the offer to become an official player. The girl was shocked to see the sentence and even looked away from Zhu Lin's dead body. Xiao Meng frightenedly asked Zhu Yan, was it all because the ghost madam was still alive and now it was their turn? The inconsolable Meng continued to ask Zhu Yan that they could never escape from the creepy ghost now? The red-haired girl thought about the fact that such a huge sign hanging right above their heads in the air, and no one paying attention to it, meant she was the only one seeing it. Zhu Yan stood in shock, she couldn't answer Xiao Meng anything, but she heard her brother's voice. Xin pulled Meng away from her sister and told her that she was scaring Zhu Yan. The girl herself thought that she was expected to answer, and Zhu Ling died suspiciously and might have accidentally handed her the pass. She thought about what would happen if she refused, and looked at the corpse of her friend Zhu Lin. A gloomy Zhu Yan replied that she chooses to be a player despite her misgivings. Everything began to spin in front of the girl in blue colors. She was being told that Mission S was completed and 20,000 points were gained. The videos fell out in front of the girl, and it was explained to her that they were recordings of Sadako's fake techniques. A book appeared in front of Zhu Yan. It was explained to her that she had gotten part of the ability to record Sadako's fake techniques. Zhu Yan said that this game was unbelievable. They themselves admitted that the ghost was a fake. She realized from the pictures she saw that Z had helped her get rid of the ghost that day, and her abilities would help her in future incidents. But Z had gotten abilities too, because otherwise she wouldn't have been able to kill the ghost. Before the girl could figure out where to spend her points, an announcement popped up that the next game would start tomorrow at 14.00, and all participants had to be on their own personal territory. The game signs were missing. Shin asked his sister if she was okay, and Gawkers discussed the death of a young girl after she was hit by a car. Zhu Yan was uninspired by what she saw and simply said that the game was very dumb. The story shifts back to Zhu Yan's mansion, where she and her brother headed after the unpleasant news. To clear his thoughts a bit, Shin poured himself some water into a glass. Shin sat with a glass of water and looked towards Zhu Yan. He wondered why his sister had been silent since they arrived home. What could she be thinking about? Shin suggested that his sister is inconsolably upset over her friend's death and she is afraid that her brother will be worried about her too. She doesn't allow herself to express her emotions. The guy decided to cheer up his sister and moved closer to her and said that he saw the accident victim coming out of her house. It was most likely Zhu Yan's friend. He explained to his sister that the world is unpredictable and she shouldn't be too sad. The girl took a glass of water and thought about what Zhu Ling rightly received. After all, she had passed the curse over her and the only thing she was worried about was the upcoming trials. The girl looked intently at the guy and thought that she couldn't put him in danger. Because of this game, Zhu Yan might die at any moment. The guy noticed his sister's gaze. He warned the girl that he wasn't going anywhere. He was here now, and Zhu Yan couldn't make him move an inch. Shin suggested not talking about it for now, and reminded his sister that it was her birthday, so it would be a great idea to go shopping. He could carry her bags. The girl thought about the guy's words and said that shopping did sound very tempting. The story carries over to the second day, half past two. Zhu Yan sat next to her brother, who was playing a game on her phone and stroking his hair, while reading the news about yesterday's car accident. Zhu Yan guessed that this was exactly how the game eliminates players. It was much more powerful than the girl thought. 
Ju Yan left her brother and said she was going to go get some sleep and asked him not to disturb him. Shin, on the other hand, was upset that no one was touching his hair nicely anymore and realized that his sister was upset about the news. She's so kind. The girl stripped off her clothes and went to the closet to get a new look. She was heading for a yellow suitcase as she exited the check room. She was finishing tying her hair. Her look was a bit unusual and somber. Her belt was decorated with a skull, and the girl herself was all in black. There were crosses, compass, sword, and other paraphernalia lying there. The girl herself didn't know if the chi could be taken with her in the game, so she would just have them ready just in case. After a short wait, the clock finally showed the correct time, 14.00. A notice for a new player appeared in front of the girl who was sitting on her suitcase. The rule of using points has appeared. Points can be used to buy weapons or in exchange for money, also to increase strength. One point equals 10,000 lowly coins. The girl thought that she was rich now and Zai wasn't lying when he talked about the reward. The message itself also wrote the rules of using the technique. It could be improved using points after completing a round with S rank. The game also warned that players couldn't attack each other, and the girl breathed a sigh of relief. The girl began to allocate her points and realized that she should not spend everything thoughtlessly in an unfamiliar game, because as she participated in it, she could realize that she needed more. But she also has to arm herself to the max because her main goal is to survive. Then she was distracted by a new message. There was a rookie gift. It included two talismans, two game passes. It was only priced at a thousand points and could be bought once. Juyan decided that she couldn't do without this set. And moreover, she had another 8,000 on her balance, so she decided to buy it. Preparations to enter the game began, the girl holding onto her suitcase and preparing to teleport. She looked around and realized that all of her gear couldn't get in the game with her. The girl sensed she wasn't alone here. She was a little uneasy about it. She turned around to see who was in the game with her. To her left, she saw a girl and two men. They were most likely players as well. Zhu Yan began to study the appearance of the people beside her and guessed from their clothes that they were also players. The players also began to watch and analyze Zhu Yan's appearance and behavior. One guy seemed to want to say something to the girl but stopped. The hooded guy held back from commenting and instead covered himself with his cap, as if he didn't want anyone to recognize him. Zhu Yan also paid attention to the guy. She noticed that he was shocked to see her. He probably knew the girl or maybe even from her university. Here everyone was distracted by a creaking door. Some man opened it and was saying something. A man came outside the house and asked the young men if they were renting from him. Here the man looked up and woke up a little. He was surprised by the participants of the game. He looked at Zhu Yan and the other girl who was standing next to her and cried out that they were beautiful models. The man introduced himself and asked to be called Brother Chem Xiao. He invited the guests to come through and let him bring the suitcases in. All the hard work should be done by men like him. The man reached out his hand toward the hooded guy's suitcase, but the man pulled it away from Xiao's hands. Chem Xiao didn't understand such a reaction from the guy after all. He was just trying to help with the suitcase. An awkward pause hung between the guy and Chu Xiao, where the man looked a bit foolish. Zhu Yan quite watched this and appreciated the violent reaction, then thought that she definitely knew the guy. Kem Xiao took one of the suitcases and guided his guests around the building. While Kem Xiao and the guests were climbing the stairs, the landlord shouted to the girl sitting next to him on the phone that they had guests today. The young and beautiful girl took her eyes off the phone and grudgingly said, Damn. Kem Xiao shouted after the girl that they needed more money. Zhu Yan watched the disgruntled high-heeled girl leave. She also called Kem Xiao an idiot. Kem Xiao saw a woman with groceries in her hands, called her teacher Chu, and asked if she was going to cook dinner, to which she replied that she would do it now. The woman walked past Zhu Yan after a short dialogue. She was all bruised and beaten up. Zhu Yan noticed it right away. She immediately noticed the difference between the owner and the renters. She kept looking at the woman who was hiding the beatings on her face. She assessed all the people she saw and said the house was oppressive and could explode at any moment. What was wrong with this game? The man explained that there were four visitors and only two rooms, so they had to decide who would sleep with whom. Kem Xiao left after opening the doors and added that if they needed anything, he would be on the first floor. He had everything they needed. The man reminded the other players that they had agreed to introduce themselves while they were still standing at the entrance. He closed the door so no one could hear them. The man introduced himself as Li Li and said he was 32 years old. He also added that he works as a cab driver and this is his third game in a row. The girl got a little upset and said her name was Wang Pei. She was 25 years old and it was her first time, so she relied on the others. The mysterious hooded guy also introduced himself. He said his name was Liu Xin and he was a student of S University. It was his second time here. Zhu Yang realized that it was indeed her university mate and gave her name and that it was her first time here. Immediately, the game's interface reappeared in front of the players with the mission details written on it. It said that in seven days, everyone in this mansion would die and become ghosts. Wang Pei got a little nervous. 
The goal of the mission is to survive the seventh night when the murders start. Complaints have been heard that this game is not like the others. They changed the map and made the objective harder. Li Li was horrified. He asked why. The angry man said that this mission was too difficult for beginners. He asked the players if anyone was hiding their experience. He looked at the faces of his comrades and assumed that the hidden experience had increased the complexity of the mission. Zhu Yan thought that the difficulty had increased from her S-rank, but to her mission mates she said that she had just completed the trial and was playing for the first time. Afterwards, she asked the guys if they knew much about this place. Li Li thought the girl was suspicious of him and said that he lacked experience, but was lucky to get on the same team as the veterans in the first two rounds. The man said that the basis of teamwork is mutual trust. They have the same goal, and it's better to unite so that there is a win-win situation for everyone. Juyan thought that working as best man made the man stupid because he can't even assess the situation and already takes everything into his own hands. Li Li in turn thought that the new girl could interfere with them. Li Li decided to ask Juyan how many points she had scored on the trial task. The girl decided to lie and replied that she had only scored 2,000 points. Li Li and Wang Pei were astonished at this result, and the girl swept up that this was a B-rank minimum. Juyan became very curious. She asked, how much is it, and how many points do players usually get? Wang Pei said an experienced person from her past team told her that this is a game whose difficulty and number of monsters eliminated determines your rank. Passing with griefing gives you a rank and 500 points. Calmly passing without damaging the monster gives you a D rank and a thousand points. If you manage to injure a monster, you will get C rank and one and a half thousand points. Wounding a monster several times will be rewarded with a rank and two thousand points. Successfully killing a monster will undoubtedly give the A rank and eight thousand points. And if you win an undeniable victory, dominating the monster, you will get the legendary S rank. Lili only added to the girl's words that the last rank was difficult to achieve, and it was very rare. Wang Pei expressed her fears about the presence of a monster here. A rank players who were able to kill monsters were better than the rest at first. Most people are only E and D rank, so it's not easy to come up with a survival plan. Zhu Yan listened to the words of her comrades and came to the conclusion that the ghost she was mocking was indeed scary. The company turned around and were distracted by some shouting, a man yelling at his wife and calling her every possible swear word. A drunk and angry man claimed to his wife that she was lying to him about buying textbooks, but was just providing for another man and cheating on him. A man beat up a teacher with his son and said his tuition was not cheap and he only knew how to draw. The man began beating the child and yelling that he was living in his house and eating his food and wanted to grow up like his real father. Lili said that they were minor NPCs and suggested that they should not interfere in their relationship, but rather go back. Wang Pei agreed with the man. Disagreeing with her new friends was apparently Zhu Yan, who grabbed a nearby fire extinguisher. Li Li watched the girl with the fire extinguisher fearfully and asked what the girl was going to do. Zhu Yan asked the man who dropped the check for 200 bucks. He looked up and said it was him. Instead of money, Zhu Yan hit him very hard with a fire extinguisher right in the face. The man rolled backwards from Zhu Yan and she asked him how dare he ask his wife for Mahjong money. The man lay in a pool of his own blood, and Zhu Yan asked him how the man had the nerve to say he was providing for a child. The man's face was covered in blood, and he asked the girl to stop, assuring her he wouldn't do it again. Zhu Yan said the man is meek in public, but cruel at home, after which she called him scum. The girl turned around in front of the mother and child and walked back to her team. The teacher sat with tears in her eyes and stared back at the brave girl who had saved her. Zhu Yan assessed her enhanced body. Then, twirling the fire extinguisher in her hands, suggested that the guys go back and talk some more. Apparently, Li Li and Wang Pei didn't particularly like the girl's antics and were looking at her back very worried. But she was liked by Liu Xin, who was humbly looking in the girl's direction. The action shifts to room 207, where the group discussed everything as they got to know each other. Li Li was troubled by Zhu Yan's abrupt actions and reminded her that these people would become ghosts in seven days, and if she wanted trouble, let her not involve them. Impatient Zhu Yan tousled her hair and replied that they will not be in danger. After all, they are doing what they have to do, and the result will not change. Or is Li Li afraid of the consequences? The girl asked. Li Li mockingly asked Zhu Yan if she thought it would change their fate. Li Li said this is a cheap ploy. The game would never allow such obvious gaps that Zhu Yan could take advantage of. Does the girl think that others do not know what she is thinking? Zhu Yan said that she had previously heard of a similar story. The player sent a team abroad thinking that by protecting the other players, the number of ghosts would decrease. But no matter what, when time runs out, then each player must return. The girl further explained that the game just wants to see them fight the ghosts, no matter how long they go against the system or how far they run away from this room. On the night of the seventh day, they will all be required to return. The girl continued. She didn't understand why the game wanted them to do good deeds. She also remembered that Ju Lin was brutally killed so she would take part. Also, she asked if nothing would change. 
What was the point of being cautious? Wang Pei expressed her thoughts. She said that it would be better to be quiet, for otherwise, when this family turned into ghosts, they would look for her first. Li Li said that the situation is overwhelming and everyone is concerned and annoyed, but this vicious game revealed its intentions early on. Juyan stood there and showed denial of Li Li's words with her whole appearance. She really wanted to punch the man. Li Li began to tell the story. On the night of the seventh day, Mrs. Kui would be raped and accidentally killed in the midst of a struggle with a man who was harassing her. That same night, Teacher Chu and her son from the second floor will be killed by her husband, who suspects that the son is not from him. A high school student who can't stand the ridicule and bullying at school will hang himself, and that's just phase one where people kill people. But there's a second phase where ghosts will kill people. Mrs. Tsui, who died unwillingly, will be reborn as a vengeful ghost and will take down her killer. All those who gossiped about her and harassed her, although the only cause of her death was the hotel owner who opened the door to the killer in her room. Whereas Teacher Chu and her son decide to take revenge on her husband and father respectively. When everyone in the building is dead, they will turn into ghosts hungry for death. And after that, the third phase will start where the ghosts will kill the players. Usually the game didn't let them go out so early. Since they have enough time, then they have to find a solution. Li Li suggested splitting the work. Two can go out for help and see if there are temples and priests nearby. The temples will most likely be located in the city. Liu Xin and Zhu Yan will be chosen for this task, while the other two can take advantage of the time while the owners are away to get the keys and look for clues in other rooms. Wang Pei and Lily have the honor of watching the hotel owner guarding the keys. Wang Pei swept up that there was no way the owner could leave and they couldn't take the keys. It pissed her off. She also wondered how Zhu Yan and Liu Xin were doing. Zhu Yan and Liu Xin walked around the city. The girl was wearing new clothes and looked happy. The girl told the guy that although she hadn't noticed it before, he had pretty good taste. Liu Xin looked at the girl and couldn't find the words to respond to her compliment. He just smiled and Zhu Yan complimented him again, saying that he looked good when he smiled. The couple witnessed hooligans beating up some schoolboy and trying to take away his bag. One of the hooligans got to the guy's bag and was preparing to see money or something else valuable in there. The beaten boy had only to lie down and cry in front of the hooligans. The bullies threw all the stuff out of the guy's bag and to their surprise there was nothing there but books. One of the bullies ordered the pants of the guy who assured him he had no money to turn around while the other pulled out a clerical knife. Just then, a woman's voice called out to them, asking if all the boys in the neighborhood were so rowdy. The guys turned around and saw the beautiful Ju Yan in her new appearance. She looked very attractive. The guys immediately noticed that the girl was very cute and as if they fell in love with her at first sight. Ju Yan recognized the bullies and said that she was a new guest at Brother Xiao's hotel, and she was very pleased to meet them. One of the bullies said it was Yue's great fortune to live with such a beautiful neighbor but his friends continued to hold the guy in a chokehold. The guy went on to make contact with the girl and said that she was obviously not from around here, which meant he could offer his help so she wouldn't get scammed. He also asked to add each other on WeChat. Zhu Yan said that she relies on her parents at home and her friends outside and she is very lucky to meet such people. She also said that she really has a request for bullies. The guys were charmed by the girl's cuteness and were already ready to help in any way they could. One of the guys asked the girl to tell him about her request. The girl unhappily told me that she had been shopping today. She had gotten carried away and maxed out her credit card. She tried to ask the guys for money, saying that they couldn't stand to see her eating pickled vegetables for the rest of her days in the city. And with hopefulness, the girl having told of her request interrogated the boys whether they would help her. The guys looked at each other and realized that whatever the girl wanted from them, they wouldn't be able to help financially. The main one of the bullies asked the girl doubtfully, she must be joking with them? The girl grudgingly asked if she could tell she was joking and added that she was so glad when those said they could help her. The guys realized that this was the third time they had taken money from the poor guy, and the main one of them said that they wanted to help, but their pockets were empty, and he suggested Juyan to check it herself. The girl took seriously the suggestion to check the pockets of the troublemakers and asked Liu Xin to do so. The hooded guy put the purchases on the ground and headed toward the bullies to check them out. The local gang didn't appreciate such a thing and the main one of them asked Liu Xin, the one that wanted to die and they began to knead their fists. The hooligans pounced on the calm Liu Xin with fists and promised to show who was really tough. Time is rescheduled to the same place after a brief fight. The bullies stood in their underwear, and Zhu Yan asked them to stand straight and assured them that they had nothing to fear. The girl with the phone in her hands asked the guys to turn around and guided them for a picture. Liu Xin, on the other hand, stood nearby and watched it contentedly. The girl asked the guys to raise their passports higher and started taking pictures of them. She started telling off the guys that their pockets were cleaner than their faces and they were making such a beautiful girl starve. One of the hooligans held his passport at the level of his face and asked if they could wire some money tomorrow. 
Juyan immediately caught the guy's thought and said that it already looked like a conversation. The girl approached one of them and started threatening. She said that if the guys didn't show up tomorrow, they would regret it a lot. She showed their phone pictures and added that the poor girl had information she could easily find them with. The bullies quickly ran off somewhere and the girl asked them to do as they saw fit. The victim, meanwhile, had put the books in his bag and also decided not to test his fate and run away. Juyan thought about how to stop the guy, but he had already run far enough away. Juyan was upset that she wasn't even thanked. She also added that it was no wonder why the villains were fixated on him. Given his nervous behavior, anyone would think he was hiding gold bars in his backpack. Liu Xin asked the girl why they should face the bullies tomorrow, if she didn't like watching others bullying people. Wouldn't just be enough to beat them up? Juyan replied that they need to get information from the neighborhood. After all, two foreigners can't do anything good. And the locals go around all day doing nothing this should be taken advantage of. Liu Xin and Juyan had already managed to go back to the hotel after shopping and fighting. The guy was carrying all the purchases and the girl was texting something on her phone. The owner greeted them and told them that the nice girl was finally back. Wang Pei and Li Li were quietly whispering, and the man noticed that the two of them were having a shopping spree. Ju Yan looked at her teammates assessing their work for today. She looked at the number of drinks she'd had and sighed tensely, realizing that no one had gotten the keys. The girl put the bags in front of the owner and asked him to send them to the dry cleaners, while giving advice on what to do and how to do it. She also added that the garbage bag in the room should be thrown away, and the towel sterilized with hot water. The owner apologized but said they don't provide such services, to which Juyan replied that she would compensate for the cost, and Xiao could charge whatever price she wanted. Hearing about the money, Xiao immediately got up from his chair and asked these all questions to be left to him. He also suggested the girl to go upstairs and rest after shopping. The man huffed and ran with Juyan's belongings and assured her that as the older brother, he would take care of everything. Li Li immediately began to express resentment toward Juyan. He said that those instead of information spent the whole day shopping in the mall. He also pointed out that the girl is new and has not yet seen the scary ghosts and treats this place as a playground. Li Li wasn't finished and continued to tell the girl not to fool around after all. Their lives were at stake, and if she didn't restrain herself, they would have to split up. The girl stood and listened attentively to Li Li, who warned her that the death rate of beginners might be low, but now the difficulty had definitely increased, so she should think about how to increase her luck. Here the man left Juyan alone and started to Liu Xin who was standing nearby. Li Li reminded the guy that the girl was a beginner and didn't understand the complexity of the situation. The man said he understands how young the guy is, but when Liu Xin is chasing girls, you have to be careful not to put your life in danger. A Juyan rightly asked the couple how their progress was. Li Li expressed so much to them, they must have been able to achieve success, to which Li 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 and Wang Pei were a bit shocked. The couple started making excuses right away, Wang Pei saying that the owner had been in the hallway all day and they couldn't find a moment. Li Li only added that they had already broken their heads on how to lure him out. Zhu Yan looked towards the couple and asked them, didn't she give them the perfect chance right now? Liu Xin stood and listened as the girl explained to the couple that Miss Kui would be leaving for work soon. She had chased the owner away and they had at least half an hour to go over all of this. Ju Yan continued to explain the resident's daily routine, saying that Teacher Chu leaves work at 6 in the evening. She will be back before half past 7, as she will buy groceries and pick up the baby. Later, the girl asked how the guys failed to do such a simple task, but criticized her with Liu Xin. Wang Pei and Li Li stood in shock. They appreciated Ju Yan's smartness, but noticed that she was a bit rude. The morning of the second day of play began at the hotel. The girls were coming down the stairs, Ju Yan was humming something, and Wang Pei expressed her envy saying that she hadn't slept a wink last night. The guys were already sitting at the table, Li Li was taking his breakfast, and Liu Xin was sitting with a cup of coffee. Wang Pei said hello to them. Teacher Chu and her son walked toward the stairs, and Ju Yan pulled a wet wipe from the package. Liu Xin decided to be polite and pushed back the chair for the girl, and told her not to worry and he had already wiped everything. Ju Yan was surprised by this guy's attitude towards her. She asked him that he really understands her. There was already a cooked breakfast on the table for Ju Yan, prepared by the guy. The guy said that Ju Yan is really popular in the university. Even the online forums have information about her. He has been watching her for a while. But the girl of course does not know him. And because she helped to get some points, then he will try to be friends with such bumps. Ju Yan realized that Liu Xin's explanation made sense after all. There was indeed a lot of necessary information about her on the forums. But wasn't he being too soft? Just then a childish hand grabbed the girl by her shirt and pulled, trying to summon her. Ju Yan felt a sudden movement and turned her head back to investigate who was calling her. The girl didn't see anyone at her eye level, so she decided to look a little lower. She saw the smiling boy she had rescued the first day from his drunken father. He was holding out an egg to her. 
Juyan started looking at the boy, expecting him to say something to her. The child didn't take the girl's hint and embarrassedly hid his face behind the egg. Juyan briefly looked into the confused and hidden face of the boy, which made the child more and more embarrassed. Then she decided that he was unable to say anything to her and silently accepted the gift from the children's hands. The happy boy was already heading to his mom, but she told the one that not so fast. The guy hid behind his mom and she thanked the girl for last night. When the father is drunk, he easily explodes and no one can control him. She is in as well. Juyan replied highly. She said it was fine, but she was not interested in incompetent people as a teacher. She asked using those words to reassure herself. The girl said she hid him because he was bothering Juyan herself. But as it is, they are a beautiful family and advised to keep it up. The teacher was clearly hurt by the girl's words. She was unpleasant to hear such ironic criticism. The upset and battered mother and son walked away from the table, and Juyan just continued eating her breakfast. Li Li was surprised at what he saw and quietly told Wang Pei that even yesterday the girl had helped them. But today she was attacking with words. Wang Pei herself asked if anything could happen if this kind of thing continued, to which she received the reply that if powerful women like Juyan didn't learn to control her temperament, she would definitely be implicated. Then a message came on Juyan's phone. It was the ringleader of the hooligans who beat up the schoolboy yesterday. He wrote that Juyan's instructions had been carried out, and she proposed to meet at a cafe at the intersection. Juyan told Liu Xin that he would accompany her on some business, then handed her an egg given to him by a boy and said it was his reward. Li Li and Wang Pei were surprised that the girl pays the guy with an egg. The boy took the egg in his hands and began to examine it, suspecting something amiss. Liu Xin peeled the egg from its shell. Afterward, he held it out to Juyan and said that gifts from NPCs always have benefits, and the girl should eat it. Wang Pei and Li Li sat in bewilderment. They certainly understood everything, but there had to be a limit somewhere. Juyan started examining the egg, checking it with her fork, and asked again if the guy's words were serious. Just then the team's breakfast was interrupted by some noise, a man reprimanding a girl for going to work in the wrong place. The man talked about how the men in that place are not gentlemen, they specialize in chasing young girls. The guy kept reprimanding the girl and saying that places like this have a bad influence on women. They have sex and abortions every other day. There is no one there without a sexually transmitted disease. How is she not scared to sit at the same table with them? The girl decided to answer the guy too and asked him what was wrong with him. How could he know that? He didn't even know anyone there. Why did he think he could criticize her every move? She also asked him to get off her back. Xiao Kui pointed the owner at the guy and said that he was bothering others. Why weren't more measures taken? The owner fixed his gaze on the girl's breasts and started giving advice. He said that they were still very young and there was no need to be so angry. If it was a love quarrel, the couple should talk face to face. Xiao Kui was angered by the owner's words and she hinted that they were not a couple. The man started to say that all girls are only interested in money. In other words, he blamed the girl for not being with him. There was a rumbling sound and the guy fell to his knees in front of Xiao Kui. He grabbed the girl's legs and asked what he needed to do to make the girl realize about his love. He suggested to end this quarrel. Xiao Kui snapped and tried to throw the guy's hands off her legs, after which she called him crazy and said they were never close. The man kept grabbing Xiao Kui's leg, and she kept asking her to let go, but the owner treated it like a small family quarrel, so he didn't pay much attention to it. The owner on the other hand told the girl to listen to a little advice from Big Brother, you shouldn't offend simple-minded people. There might be consequences, but he was interrupted by Juyan who shouted that people were becoming more and more shameless. The girl said that people only think about their poverty, forgetting that they are also ugly and lazy. There is nothing wrong with a toad wanting goose meat, but the problem is that when it fails, it becomes hysterical and blames it on the goose. Juyan continued. She asked, if the guy is so shameless, why doesn't he blame the gods for the fact that meat buns don't just fall from the sky? Juyan switched from the man to the girl. She called her a tramp and asked how she let him harass him until she got home. If anyone in her sorority was so useless, she would have kicked that girl out by now. Xiao Qi froze at the girl's words. She seemed to understand her rightness, but from the looks of it, she was hurt by those words. Zhu Yan indifferently ordered the man out of here calling him a toad and asked why he smelled so stinky. When was the last time he took a bath? The guy on the other hand hid behind Xiao Che's leg and asked not to touch him for he had a weak heart. The unscrupulous Liu Xin didn't seem to care much about the guy's problems and headed towards him. A man's screams could be heard coming from the hotel. Apparently Liu Xin was still able to get to him despite the guy's health problems. After briefly figuring things out, the couple headed to a coffee shop to confront the bullies. The rascals started talking about Mrs. Chu. She's a teacher in the junior high school while the boys are in the senior high school. The guy promoted the school picture and said that a girl in their class has a mom who works as a teacher, which means she knows a lot about teacher stuff. 
This girl said that Mrs. Chu is not local. She met her husband through an arranged marriage a few years ago. Her husband's place of work changed and the family had to move. Juyan listened to the guy's stories without much interest. She thought that the first day they learned about the problems of all the residents, nothing had changed since then. The guy kept talking about Mrs. Chu. He only added that she and her husband hadn't been married for two years before he lost his job and couldn't recover until now. The girl decided that they should find out what he valued while he was alive as it would carry over to his ghostly form. The guys kept talking about Chu's husband who started gambling and drinking a lot. A little later the husband found his wife's teenage diary for some reason and learned about her first secret love. Zhuyan nibbled on her ice cream and continued to listen. Husband Chu thought about her confused feelings in her youth and how pure she was. It was too cruel for him. After all this, Mrs. Chu started coming to work with injuries. But because of his character, he won't tell anyone about it so as not to be a laughing stock. Liu Xin was visibly moved by this story and he covered his face with his hand when he heard it. The guy pointed to the photo and said that coincidentally, a new teacher, Mrs. Chu's lover, had come to their child's school. The guys pointed to the man and added that her husband even went to complain to the office. The situation had gotten heated, so it wasn't hard for them to find the information. Juyan remarked that the teacher was quite good. She must have been wrong when she said that Chu had bad taste. Liu Xin, on the other hand, started to examine the man's photo with jealousy. One of the bullies said that they also found information about the beautiful girl Kui. The guy showed a photo of a girl in some bar. Her real name is Kui Yuan. She's especially popular in school, but her reputation leaves much to be desired. The guy proceeded to show pictures of the girl and said that her family is from the suburbs. Her two younger brothers live there. Not only does she have to pay for daily expenses and tuition, but she must also provide for her brothers by working tirelessly. For her, the word of her parents was the law, and she worked tirelessly. Because of her good figure and charm, she attracted a lot of guys. That's why girls often excluded her. The fact that she worked in bars and modeling went all the way to school. Also, the guy remembered that there is a crazy man Zhang Huang. He's trying to get Kui Yuan, but he has no money or looks, and all he does is follow a girl and deceive many people that they are already in a relationship. Zhu Yan said she understood. This seductive girl is good as a pair of cheap men. Usually people like to gossip about scoffers like her, so the truth is not important at all. The bullies continued to talk about Kui Yuan. They said that she once called the police, but when the police came, they sent the girl away and said that she was wasting government resources. Then the problem was the hotel owner who said that the couple was dating. Zhu Yan was interested in this story and she asked if the bullies knew why Qi Yuan didn't leave back then. The guy replied that it must have happened because of money, because the girl first paid rent for a year in advance. But after she realized that the house did not suit her, she wanted to return the money. But the landlord refused. The guy started telling a story about how a man got a hotel. It was a mansion inherited from a distant uncle. He had a wife at the time, and they made a hostel out of the mansion and started a business. But one year a girl who lived there got lost and her family and the police spent tons of time searching. The bully continued. After this incident, the business went into decline, and the only people who remained there were foreigners. The incident was forgotten after some time, and the couple continued the business under a new name. As fate would have it, the owner's wife fell from the upper floor shortly thereafter and crashed to her death. Liu Xin and Zhu Yan looked at each other. They had never thought of such a man's lot. Zhu Yan said, thinking how such things could happen to a simple, lonely, and unhappy landlord. The same person who fools around every day. The girl asked, then what about the guy they were beating up? His name was Yue. The guys got embarrassed and said there is no need to investigate anything. They will tell everything themselves. He is half Chinese, half Thai. They themselves don't know what he did to get his parents to send him alone to study abroad. At school, the guy usually behaves strangely. His gloomy look gets on his nerves and he is constantly muttering strange things. The fat man added that he had indeed heard that the Thais were skilled in witchcraft. Then one of the hooligans hit the table with his hand and with such force that the food around his hand jumped up. The bully suddenly realized that they were just fighting and then these two came up so they were cursed. Suddenly two other guys started to calm down the agitated comrade with their fists and legs and reminded him about the nude passport photos. Juyun looked at Liu Xin and said to the one that they are like detectives when they find a clue. They will solve the next clue as well. Liu Xin asked the girl, What was she going to do now that she had found out everything? The girl replied that they were in a big hurry and didn't have time to make wild assumptions, so she would go shopping. Outside, the sun was already beginning to set over the horizon, and a crimson sunset was sweeping across the city. Liu Xin and Zhu Yan returned to the hotel where they settled after shopping. The girl was already climbing the stairs, but stopped. She remembered something. The girl turned around and called Xiao to her. A man was heard hurriedly walking towards the girl and confirming that he had heard her. Xiao, who came in, stated that he had returned all the things. 
They were standing next to the door. He also asked not to worry and said that he had sorted everything out. But that wasn't why the girl called him. Juyan said that they heard as if a little girl had gotten lost here before. Wasn't it true? The man froze in place and didn't know what to answer. He got nervous remembering the story. Juyan asked why this information is not listed on the website. If she knew about it, she wouldn't have come here. Xiao wiped his forehead from sweat and asked Juyan not to bring up the fact that some little playful girl was lost. He also added that the hotel was stunned by the news. Xiao explained that because of that incident, he was forced to close the business. What did he do to deserve it? The poor girl is already dead, and it would be rude to bring it up. That's why he meets people and tells them to be careful. The man continued his thought and repeated his set of recommendations for girls to stay out late. Don't go out late. Don't go to bad places. He also added that she caused trouble for her family and should have dragged him into it. Juyan told the man that his wife didn't cause trouble to anyone, but still somehow died. Liu Xin looked at this and thought that Juyan really is a little monster. Juyan started waving his hands and said that she heard as if his wife had fallen from here. She didn't understand how one could fall from such a narrow place, especially his wife was fat. Xiao looked at Juyan with a very evil look and the girl asked why he was looking at her as if he wanted to kill her and hide the body somewhere in this house. Zhu Yan looked at the angry man and tried to figure out, was he really angry or something else? A silence hung over the interlocutors. Xiao looked very tense. It was as if she was holding her anger inside. He exhaled as steam came out of him. He was preparing to answer the girl something. The man laughed a little and asked Zhu Yan not to joke around anymore. The anniversary of his wife's death would be in five days. He was just thinking a little. Juyan suspected something in five days, their X day should come. Everything is coming to a head. The man apologized for disturbing her and quickly withdrew. But then some man came out and Juyan gave way to him. It was Chu's lover. Apparently, he was leaving the woman in an attempt to avoid seeing her husband. Juyan immediately recognized him as Teacher Chu's first love, the one the bullies had told her about. Juyan asked, What is going on here and why is this man here? Li Li explained that he came to visit Mrs. Chu's house. Recently, her son began to get sick often and miss school. Also, he was becoming less sociable. He does not talk, has no friends. So the class teacher decided to check on him. But the alcoholic husband chased the teacher away. Lili said that this was in line with the information Ju Yan had given. He began to suspect that the 2,000 points in the first game was not just due to luck. Ju Yan abruptly headed down the hallway and asked if the husband had done anything. And who else did he dare to hit besides the child and wife? Wang Pei said that Miss Chu's first love is quite a nice man. Before he left, he said he would wait until her husband calmed down, and after that they talked, clearing up all misunderstandings. Another would have met such a drunkard hit as soon as possible. Zhu Yan asked the other part of the team, did they do what she asked them to do? Li Li said that they set them up when the owner went out to pack the girl's things. Zhu Yan asked to keep an eye on them for the next couple of days and not miss any clues. Concerned, Li Li asked, if even the police couldn't find anything, did they even have a small chance? The girl stopped and wanted to answer the man. Zhu Yan replied that of course they don't stand a chance, especially since Li Li and Wang Pei will be handling the case. Zhu Yan arrogantly stated that she was giving assignments so that the useless ones wouldn't loiter. Li Li and Wang Pei were very hurt by the words of criticism against them and they even got upset. It was already nightfall in the city. Almost everyone in the hotel was asleep. But in room 207 where Liu Xin and Li 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 lived, the light was still on. The man was drinking a soda and staring at his laptop screen. He was also thinking that he had survived the game through his own efforts. How could he let some little wench look down on him? He was tired and clutching the jar said to himself that Juyan could call men bad or poor, but in no way useless. He told himself, looking at the cameras installed in the hotel, that if the landlord slipped out of his sight, the girl could at least pull him on a globe. A loud scream rang through the hotel which startled Li Li and woke Liu Xin up. The scream came from room number 208, where the girl should be staying. Juyan pulled the ghost out of the mirror and asked the one if she was so satisfied when she was scaring people. The girl started beating the monster with the liquid soap she took from the sink. The ghost tried to fight, but Juyan was like stronger. She beat up the ghost and said that all of them in this game are insignificant. Juyan said she still didn't know why the last freak died, but her neighbor was asleep and didn't pay attention to what was happening. The girl tugged at the ghost's hair and said that the last monster was trying to fake his death. She continued to beat the ghost, trying to drive it back into the mirror. A silence hung between them. Juyan felt as if she had plucked a piece of hair from the monster. The ghost girl saw a strand of her hair in her victim's hands and was frightened for a second. She checked her hair and indeed it appeared that the girl had managed to rip some of it out for her. The ghost snapped and shouted at the top of her voice, calling Juyan a monster. But then Lili opened the door with his foot to check what they had going on. The guys no sooner got inside than they saw a girl with a strand of hair in her hands. 
They asked if they were okay, but the ghost started to bolt. A second later and the ghost was gone, she disappeared back into the mirror. Juyan accused the guys that it was all their fault. They scared the ghost and let her get away. Li Li clung to Wang Pei and didn't fully understand what their fault was, and Liu Xin began to board up the door. Wang Pei apologized loudly for making the guys worry. She explained that she couldn't sleep last night because she went to the bathroom to relieve herself and ended up being scared of a ghost. The girl kept saying that she shouldn't act like this and should be prepared for something like this, but she can't sleep since the start of the game. She was confused and passed out due to shock. Wang Pei turned to Zhu Yan and told her that if she wanted to order something, let her not be afraid of everything at the expense of the system, and it was a sin not to take advantage of it. Zhu Yan drank the wine and rightly pointed out that Wang Pei had decided to just accept the situation. Wang Pei confirmed the girl's words and added that she had miraculously escaped death and realized that no matter how the seven days passed, there was no way to relax. Zhu Yan held out an advertisement to the girl that said a little girl was missing. Wang Pei immediately remembered the ghost with the girl's picture and realized that it was her ghost and meant that she died here. The complexity of this round is too high. Everything is so connected, Pei added. Just then, Lili saw something on his phone and shrieked happily. The man cheerfully stated that something was really going on. He didn't look like he had been up all night. In his head, he hoped that he would succeed now and not be called useless anymore. Lili put the phone in the center of the table so that everyone here could see what Zhao was doing. He was talking to someone and told the interlocutor that Mrs. Tsui had gone to work. She would be back in the evening so the interlocutor could come in the afternoon. Li Li had swept up that the girl lived alone so Xiao knew her schedule. The hotel owner himself had assured the guy on the phone that he had the keys and would open the door for him. He told the man that the man was a great guy. If he asked him, Mrs. Tui just didn't know the difference between right and wrong. Everyone at the table listened to the conversation with interest. Meanwhile, Xiao continued to praise the guy, saying that he was very kind to Kui and she rejected him. He called the girl cheap. An angry Wang Pei jumped up and slapped the table. She said she had to deal with this stalker. Zhu Yan called the guy crazy and said that this kind of people are strange. When you hit them, they take it as a failure that they have to pass on the path of love. They also think that their actions are admirable. Wang Pei tried to ask Zhu Yan to deal with the annoying guy, saying that she obviously has many ways to deal with him. Meanwhile, in the hotel, the screams of a drunken alcoholic husband calling his wife names were heard again. The couple's child sat outside the door listening to his father abuse his mother. He blamed her for everything, for all his failures. When the man said he did not want to raise this child, the boy roared very hard at his father's words. Just then, the kid heard someone walking down the hallway and saw Zhu Yan, who had saved him last time. There was hope in the child's eyes. He thought to himself that the beautiful girl would now help again and daddy would stop beating mommy. But to his great regret, the company just passed by and only Wang Pei said she was sorry. Wang Pei asked Zhu Yan, why don't they help this time and just pass by? Zhu Yan replied that domestic violence jerks may be bad. But mothers who put up with their fits and can't speak up and deal with the gossip, and even protect their child, don't deserve pity. The boy was very much disappointed by the girl's words and her indifference. The boy's tears fell on the floor and he was disappointed by Zhu Yan's departure. Just as he thought, no one wants to help them. But the girl wasn't moved by the child's tears. You could tell by her look that she didn't care. The husband continued to beat the poor teacher, who had no life left on her face. Teacher Chu talked herself out of crying and screaming. She must endure it, or Xiao Ming would get upset. She understood that now her husband would let off his steam and go out drinking again. She just had to be patient. After the beating, the woman called her mother. The latter assured her that her husband could not go unpunished for long. But she warned the girl against divorce. They cannot hit the dirt face. Miss Chu recalled advice from all her colleagues who warned the woman against divorce. They said the children might commit suicide. Another woman said she should think of the children first. The man, meanwhile, started reading his wife's teenage diary. He especially liked the part where his wife said that at the sight of the guy, everything went blank. Her heart fluttered. The man with the diary in his hand started to continue mutilating his wife. He called her all possible swear words and said that she gets turned on when she meets the first guy. Just then, the angry and drunken man heard Zhu Yan's voice from behind him, who asked what happened to reading the script. The man clearly recognized the girl's voice and sobered up a bit and turned around with fear towards Zhu Yan. Zhu Yan praised the guys that it was midnight and they were indulging in memories. She had no idea that the couple had such a sophisticated lifestyle. The girl looked in the direction of the frightened drunkard with interest and asked him to tell his story. The memory journal collapsed from the man's hands to the floor. He was clearly startled by the sight of Zhu Yan. The drunken husband apologized to the girl and said he didn't know she was back. He made a little noise and would leave now. Zhu Yan listened to his words and did not show any emotion. Her face looked very cold. The man started kicking his wife and asking her to get up faster. He also accused her of being the reason they disturbed Miss Zhu. 
Li Li grabbed the rogue and carried him to the exit. He resented it and asked to tell him if there was anything he clearly didn't want to receive today. The company with Zhu Yan, Li Li, and Liu Xin were leading the man somewhere, his wife looking at the child, to whom Wang Pei explained that mom and dad had things to do and afterward offered the cake in her room. Apparently Li Li was taking a drunk man outside, he was asking for help, and his wife was standing on the stairs trying to figure out where they were taking him. The man turned around and called his battered wife dear. He begged her to save him. Chu felt sorry for her husband. She wanted to stop the company from doing anything bad to him. But she remembered all the beatings of herself and her son, all the humiliation. So she decided to keep silent, and the alcoholic immediately accused her of betrayal. Immediately for his words, the man received from Li Li. The company came to a concert of some street band, although it was hard to call it a concert. The guys just played music on the street. Zhu Yan saw that those had very little money in their guitar case. Zhu Yan walked over to the guys and told them that they only had a couple cents. Although when she passed by them the first time, it had been a while. Even the people living under the bridge are not so pathetic, the girl noted. The guys were clearly embarrassed by this and thought, after all, life is hard enough as it is. Why is the girl making them look like a laughing stock in front of everyone? Zhu Yan said that seeing how pathetic the guys were, then she would help them with ideas for a song. She asked them to break apart and play something appropriate to the atmosphere. The musician immediately rejected the offer and asked not to interfere with their business. They would not let the girl sing. Here, Li Li threw Chu's husband to the ground and told him not to pretend to be dead, but to kneel down if he didn't want to be beaten again. The musicians immediately realized that it wasn't a bad idea, and obediently yielded the microphone for Zhu Yan. Zhu Yan adjusted the microphone, especially its height, to fit her height. Zhu Yan's song started out about people who sell things on the street, but she later sang that passers-by are about to learn the story of a domestic abuser. She screamed and started singing and talking about an alcoholic whose hobby was beating his wife. Folks were interested in this groovy text and decided to watch it because something fun was expected. The musicians were surprised to have such a crowd of people around them, and Zhu Yan asked them to play. One musician asked another musician what they should play, and the latter said he didn't know. But they needed to play about family. He suggested playing a flower woman. The young musicians began to play and sing their song. They were not very good at it, but they didn't care. Zhu Yan turned towards the alcoholic and told him that if he still wanted to live, she would now ask a question, and he would answer. For every wrong answer, she would knock his teeth out. Zhu Yan asked the man how he met his wife. The man replied that it was a prenuptial agreement. Zhu Yan then spoke of Chu in a good light, calling her beautiful and just a wonderful person, and asked how he treats his wife. The audience stood and watched the scene, waiting for a response from the drunkard. To the surprise of the crowd, the man replied that he treats her well, buys her breakfast every morning, drives her to and picks her up from work. He became very angry. He was overwhelmed with emotion and repeated that he was treating her very well. He looked at his wife and was about to call her a girl of easy virtue. But he didn't have time. Something stopped him and he started screaming, sticking his tongue out. It was Zhu Yan, who stepped with all her might with her heeled shoe right on the man's hand. Zhu Yan began to press her hand even harder and said that it was not worth describing such a minor detail. She asked, after marriage, did he continue to buy breakfast and give gifts? She asked the man when they were married how much did each family pay? The man replied that she brought 200,000 yuan and his family had a wedding banquet. Zhu Yan asked about the money they received as a wedding gift. The man said it was from his family. The girl said she heard that they did not buy cars and real estate. The price for the banquet and the amount of the gift is almost the same. The money was taken by the parents. Zhu Yan gave herself some time to count. His wife's family paid 200,000 yuan for the wedding. And the groom's family paid nothing. The crowd of young people with phones were shocked by such news. They did not expect such a sight. The man himself became very ashamed at the realization of the information he had received. Teacher Chu stood and caught the looks of the crowd who were sizing her up. One guy resented the fact that even this guy was able to find a wife, and he already has two houses, but he's still alone. Another guy said it's a disgrace to men, and continued with the fact that this scumbag dares to talk about buying her breakfast. If you want to live with such a beautiful woman who doesn't care that you're poor, ugly and smelly, you owe it to yourself to devote all of yourself to her. The crowd immediately picked up on the idea and started shouting that you shouldn't go after people who treat you exceptionally well. Before the wedding, the man was a different person. Some shouted that Zhu Yan was right, some that a man didn't care about his wife's life, but everyone agreed that Chu's husband was a bad person. The celebrant himself put his head to the floor in shame and continued to listen to unflattering comments about himself. Li Li quietly told Liu Xin that sometimes it was impossible not to admire the way Zhu Yan handled such scum. Zhu Yan asked the man how long he had been unemployed and how much money he had earned in that time. The man replied that it had been two and a half years, and confusedly said he had earned nothing. 
The girl asked the alcoholic how much he spends on mahjong and booze per week, but he didn't have the conscience to answer. The girl sighed and said why would shameless people like him who live off their wives take care of the family's expenses. Zhuyan said that the teacher's job is not in the high income group. This meager salary not only has to feed three mouths, but also cover the rent, plus she has to keep a gambling alcoholic. The girl explained that she didn't think such people were needed in society. It's easy to imagine that if the family had to support an alcoholic or a gambler, that would be the end of it. Even the musicians were surprised that such a man had a wife, and Zhuyan continued by saying that the man was both an alcoholic and a player. Zhuyan didn't end there. She continued by saying that besides drinking and gambling, this gentleman has other hobbies like beating his wife after drinking. Zhuyan continued to talk about Chu's husband. She said that this dirtbag was rejected by everyone and decided to express his manhood by beating his wife to regain his confidence. The girl went on and said it was a very cheap and convenient way to relieve her stress. The man, however, obediently listened to everything. But then his silence was interrupted by a shoe that flew from the crowd right into his face. Guy was preparing to send the second shoe to the rogue as well. Someone in the crowd suggested that Mrs. Chu file for divorce. The crowd immediately picked up the slogan and started chanting the word divorce. The woman thought of the many times she wanted a divorce, but all her parents, friends, and relatives changed her mind. They asked her to work harder and be an understanding wife. But all her friends, relatives, and others didn't really think about her feelings and her son's feelings. The girl convinced herself that she and her son were human too and could have feelings. They were very much alive and especially could feel pain. The woman burst into tears. Her crying and roaring was very loud. She fell to her knees and sobbed right in front of Juyan with the microphone. Juyan finished her performance and told all the audience to support them if they felt their time was not wasted. She asked for tips to be thrown into the guitar case, and immediately a huge pile of paper money and coins filled up in there. But in addition to the money in the guitar case, the girl also asked to throw garbage, banana skins, rotten eggs, and shoes in the face of the scumbag who beats his wife. The man, if he could be called that, lay depressed. He had been shamed in the whole neighborhood. He was truly evil in the eyes of all present. The musician said goodbye to the company and asked Juyan to come back, assuring that they didn't care about the money, but just liked her stories. Juyan and the guys were already leaving. Li Li expressed his feelings about it. He said that he wanted to kill this scumbag. He even almost forgot that it was a NPS. Juyan asked the man, the one who is no longer afraid to show hostility. Li Li replied that even if they did not provoke him, he would still come after them in the guise of a ghost, after death. Embarrassing him now is better than suffering the next days. He will become a real threat after turning into a ghost. But for now, he is just trash living off his wife. Just then, Chu's voice was heard from behind the company and she called out to Juyan. She was clearly inspired by today's events and confidently stated that she wanted a divorce. Chu talked about how when she saw this man on his knees, how he was being spat at by men, women and old people, even children, and he didn't fight back, she realized. Everything the woman had put up with was pointless. She was now determined that she would not listen to anyone and wanted a divorce. Juyan didn't even look at the woman's face and simply said that it was her business. Mrs. Chu herself looked gratefully at the beauty's back. He was saying thank you to her. The action moves to the Xiao Hotel, who was yelling and throwing things around. The screams could be heard even outside. An angry Kuei threw things at Xiao, who ran away from her, and the girl was unhappy that the owner let a pervert into her room. Xiao dodged the vase flying at himself. Xiao turned around and tried to explain himself. He said he was getting old and becoming kind. He couldn't look at how pathetic this teenager was. He suggested the girl look at herself. Women should hold on tighter to such men. Kui resolutely approached the old man and asked him to evict her from here immediately. But there was already a stalker behind her back. He said that the girl shouldn't be so rude to Mr. Xiao. Besides, he didn't finish the sentence. Hadn't the girl been taught by her parents not to interrupt others? After he called her a naughty and insolent brat. Kue was beyond angry, she thought she was going crazy and asked her to kill her. There was the creak of the front door. Obviously someone had come home. Kui was happy to see Juyan and her company back, but the owner and her suitor not so much. The girl shouted that they were finally back and headed towards the company. Kui confusedly grabbed Juyan's hand, she was very happy to see her. The girl was scared. She said Juyan is a real sister to her. She helped her last time. Could she help her now too? Kui sobbed and begged to throw the creep away from here. In return, she would be able to do anything they asked. Juyan wasn't thrilled with such a suggestion. She had just taken care of one garbage, and here was another one. Juyan interrogated the girl if she was realistically willing to do everything. Even if she failed, grant her request while she was alive, then let her obey her when she became a ghost. Kui found the request quite strange, but still agreed. Li Li took the perverted man with the gift in his hands by the shoulder, and led the way. 
and Zhu Yan said they were about to see what kind of surprise he had in store. Xiao hid from justice, and the company went with the pervert to Kui's room. Zhu Yan took the first step into the room, a passage that was strewn with rose petals. The whole room was hung with some kind of pictures, and although it was supposed to look romantic, it looked more creepy. Zhu Yan was surprised by so many photos and the guy's creativity. Wang Pei was scared shitless when she took a closer look at the pictures taken. They were creepy stalker pics and they were all about Sui brushing his teeth in the bathroom. Her entire personal life, right down to the way she rides public transportation. Zhu Yan looked around the room and the pictures on the wall. She noticed that besides the pictures, there should be two dozen candles, a bag of balloons, and a bunch of rose petals picked up from the ground. Zhu Yan said the price of the guy's confession opened her eyes. The creepy stalker himself was standing there, and he was very embarrassed that anyone had seen this. Against the backdrop of a heart of wilted roses, Wang Pei said that her first love from high school was also poor. He saved more money than he spent in a month to buy a recognition bracelet. There were also cheap candles burning in the room. Wang Pei asks the guy if this junk is worth at least 30 bucks, but that explains it. He doesn't work. He just knows how to stalk, take pictures, and bother women. Of course he won't have time to work. Zhu Yan shared her story that she was chasing her first love. The day they started dating, her boyfriend gave her more than 9,000 roses and a horse. Wang Pei couldn't believe the figure of 9,000 and asked again. She also inquired why a horse. Zhu Yan explained that when he blew her off the third time, she decided that she liked wild and energetic horses, and that he would definitely be hers. After they started to meet, the guy realized he was wrong and sent her a horse. Liu Xin squinted towards the girls as they discussed it. Wang Pei thought that the world of the rich was really so inscrutable, and asked what was wrong with his logic and what was he thinking. Zhu Yan fell silent and thought about what to reply to Wang Pei. Liu Xin looked and squinted towards Zhu Yan, repeating her name softly. Zhu Yan abruptly burst out and said she didn't know. She left him because he went crazy. Zhu Yan asked to forget and never mention him again, and Liu Xin stood with hidden resentment. Wang Pei thought she should hurry up and change the subject, so she asked Liu about his first love. Zhu Yan asked the guy, What is it? Stalker grabbed the box and said that he couldn't be stopped. His feelings for Yuan were sincere. Zhu Yan repeated the guy's words about sincerity, and Li Li snatched the gift box from him. Li Li was clearly curious and opened the box, and Yuan said that it contained all sorts of stuff from the pervert's dirty collection. Li Li runs his hand inside the box and remarks that there's a lot of Velcro and he can't wait to see what's in there. The girl saw her toothbrush inside, the napkin she used to wipe her snot, the half-eaten hamburger. Also, the girl said she saw the underwear there that he had soiled when he masturbated on her, and Li Li immediately discarded the nasty box. Li Li looked at his hands and said that they had been defiled. The maniac approached the girl and said that Yuan should believe him. He really only thinks of her when he pleasures himself. Yuan didn't like such compliments and shouted at the top of her voice for the stalker to move away from her. Li Li took him by the neck, and Zhu Yan said that apparently he really has real feelings for the girl. Zhu Yan said looking at the way he loves Yuan, then he will easily pass the next test. The scared girl asked, what test? Zhu Yan looked at the creepy box of personal items and ordered Yuan to feed it all to him. The trio stood in confusion. Wang Pei felt sick even at such words. Li Li came to his senses a little, laughed and said that would be a great idea. Li Li climbed on top of the guy, and assured the guy that the main course, exactly the underwear, would remain at the end. Zhu Yan only added that if it was sincere love, he better enjoy it. Li Li was shoving stuff from the box into the mouth of the guy, who was choking on it and trying to spit it out. Zhu Yan asked the guy why he spits it out. Does he mean it's too disgusting food? She also made the point that the guy won't even eat his precious lover's secretions. What kind of love is that then? Li Li shoved personal Vezi Yuan into the pervert's mouth with great anger and ordered him to eat. Just then, someone knocked on the door of the room. The curious Liu Xin turned around and wondered who could have disturbed them. The guy pulled the doorknob down, after which he opened the door itself. A startled Xiao stood outside the door. He froze at the sight of the guy. Liu Xin looked straight into the eyes of the hotel owner. Xiao, on the other hand, covered himself with his hand, trying to avoid an extra glance. He hid his guilty face completely. Zhu Yan noticed the man and called out his name. Zhu Yan started to smile at Mr. Xiao and asked what's wrong. Does he want to join too? Xiao refused the proposal and said that he thought it was a bit too much. Zhang was passionately in love, but he does not have the taste to choose the right method. Xiao's arguments didn't work on Li Li, and he continued to torment Zhang who was begging for help. Xiao still continued to defend the maniac. He said that it was just a kid like everyone else. Don't they go around upsetting women all the time? He also said that it was getting late and suggested to go upstairs and rest. Zhu Yan asked if she helped him with his passion. Look at Miss Kui. She is beautiful and with a good heart. A lame figure. Also, she has great achievements in a prestigious university. Also, she is independent and earns money for herself and family. Such a good girl. Whoever wants her. Comparing Zhang with others in appearance, he does not have it. 
he also does not have money. He does not even fit the basic requirements, so he must make amends with sincerity, Zhu Yan continued. Zhu Yan kept telling the incomprehensible Xiao that if you are unable to take responsibility for your actions, then you are a disgusting asshole, and to compete you need to demonstrate ability. Next time he would say that in pursuing Kui, he dared to eat this kind of things. Li Li was already holding the underwear over the poor man's head. He asked how he preferred straws or slices. Zhang screamed and sobbed at the mere thought that it was about to touch his face. Xiao said that destroying competitors is the right way to win a woman's heart. Yuan started shoving the candles into Zhang's mouth and said that Hei really liked this method. Yuan also asked Xiao, didn't he say that a girl should not only look at beauty and wealth, but also sincerity? Xiao stood in shock at what he saw. He realized that as expected, the woman's heart was the cruelest. The action moves to the hotel courtyard. Zhang runs away, holding his mouth and restraining himself from vomiting on the nearest bush. Yuan said that after that, she realized that the only language a maniac can understand is violence, and words are powerless here. The girl also added that she should carry pepper spray and a taser in her backpack in case the pervert comes back. Yuan finally gained confidence. She said that the guy was not able to catch her yet, but even if he dared, she would rip his balls off next time. Zhu Yan stood nearby and listened to the girl, who said that if he thought of complaining to the cops, they already thought Zhang was a couple with her, and thus wouldn't interfere in their affairs. In front of the shocked Xiao, Yuan said that that scene was giving her pleasure. She would definitely sleep well tonight. Xiao stood and examined the girls. He didn't understand their cruelty, and wondered what kind of people they were. The man looked at Zhu Yan's back, and remembered that Miss Chu's dummy went out for a while, and came back no longer wanted her husband and the trusting Kui suddenly became fierce before they could be called women. But in the past four days, what had Miss Ju turned them into? It was already night outside, everyone was asleep. Zhu Yan was also sleeping very soundly, but quiet footsteps were heard, the girl didn't wake up from it. But then the door opened with a creak, and the light fell directly on Zhu Yan's face, who continued to sleep soundly. Wang Pei was apparently going somewhere, she was the culprit behind the sound. The sound of a click from the door lock and the door was already closed, and Wang Pei didn't go back to bed. She walked down the hallway. A loud rumble woke the red-haired beauty. It was heard like a cannon shot in the quiet night. Zhu Yan immediately decided to check if everything was alright with her companion. To the girl's great surprise, the neighbor was not around. Li Li and Zhu Yan met in the hallway, which was where the loud rumbling came from. All three stood in front of the stairs and looked down. The sleepy guys didn't realize right away who was lying there. Squinting a little and waking up, Li Li shouted that it was Wang Pei. She had fallen down the stairs or someone had pushed her. The girl's body was bruised, and Wang Pei herself lay unconscious and showed no signs of life. The action continued already on the road. There was a young moon in the sky, which meant that the night was not over yet. The minibus was rushing down an empty nighttime highway at a fairly high speed. An excited Xiao asked Wang Pei what she was doing staggering up the stairs so late at night. To himself, he thought to himself that since the day the guys had stopped by, there hadn't been a day without his knees shaking. The grouchy hotel owner said that if she didn't turn on the light and then fell, it wasn't his problem. Zhu Yan argued with the man, and said that he couldn't just say that. The girl recalled the story of Xiao's wife who crashed to death on the stairs and asked the man if maybe her spirit got bored and she decided to find a girlfriend. Xiao huffed, he definitely didn't like this kind of question. He continued to drive the car in silence. Liu Xin and Liu Li sat and looked amongst themselves while Zhu Yan thought that the missing ghost of the girl from yesterday had shown up. It seems Xiao's wife would soon reveal herself. Zhu Yan looked at Wang Pei's body and noted to herself that no matter what exactly the girl was doing in the middle of the night, she shouldn't have been walking near the stairs. If these two things aren't related, then it's illogical for the world of horror, Zhu Yan finished her thought. The time of day hadn't moved anywhere, it was still deep night. The team was finally able to make it to the hospital where Wang Pei could be treated. The drip that was put in the girl was dripping. Wang Pei was covered in band-aids and injuries, she was still showing no signs of life and wasn't moving yet. Just then, after a couple seconds, Wang Pei opened her eyes and tried to realize where she was. Zhu Yan asked the girl how he was feeling, to which she received a reply that Wang Pei was feeling a little dizzy. Zhu Yan explained to her that she fell down the stairs. The doctor checked her, and it was nothing serious. Wang Pei explained exactly how she fell. She got up, went to the restroom, then stunned. She heard a woman's voice telling her that the restroom was not working and should use the common toilet on the first floor. She first thought it was Zhu Yan but looked back. The voice was completely different. And when the girl hit her head, she felt something self-correct her fall. Zhu Yan said that it was really strange. Even the doctor wondered how Wang Pei was not seriously injured. Wang Pei started crying and said it must be a ghost and started complaining that there were so many players around, but she was the one who got hit. Li Li walked out into the hallway and saw some guy running around the hospital. He recognized the kid. It was Wu Yue who lives in the same hotel with them. 
He called out to him and asked the boy what he was doing here. The man saw the already empty space in front of him and noticed the boy running fast. He turned around to see where the guy was running out from. What he saw shocked Li Li. Wu Yue ran out of the medical waste storage room. From room 203, where Wang Pei was lying, questions could be heard in Li Li's direction. Was he sure he hadn't gotten anything wrong? Li Li said he was sure it was that senior Zhu Yan confirmed it even more by saying that Wu Yue was the only one who didn't come out to rumble Wang Pei. Li Li is correct, that means the one originally wasn't there. But what is he hiding? He wouldn't be stabbing people in retaliation, would he? Zhu Yan suspected something bad. She didn't say anything back to Li Li. But from her look, it was clear that Wu Yue was up to something. It was morning after a busy night outside birds were singing, and life in the hotel was beginning to pick up. Chu walked to school with her son by the hand. She admonished him and asked him to share food with his friends. But behind the mom with the child was Wu Yue, who was apparently also heading to school. Li Li was drinking coffee and watching everything with interest. Only he probably didn't care as much about the mother and son as he did about the mysterious high school student. They're gone, Li Li assured his team. All the guys were sitting next to the window, and Wang Pei, who had been discharged from the hospital, was left with scars on her face from the fall. Just then, the key penetrated the keyhole and Li Li opened the door. A creak and the door opened. Nothing could be found in Wu Yue's room at first glance other than a mess. Li Li walked to the window and noticed that the guy's room had such a depressing atmosphere. On the wall were pictures of skeletons of people, animals, fish, snakes, sharks, and other wildlife. The team also found an altar in the room with a photo of some woman, and Li Li assumed it was Wu Yue's mother. The room was very dusty and Zhu Yan coughed, suffocating from such a mess. Wang Pei suggested Zhu Yan wait for them outside, so the dust wouldn't bother her, and she could warn them in case the master of the house woke up. Zhu Yan dismissed the concerns by saying that they arrived at 5 in the morning, and it was now 7, so Xiao was sleeping like a dead man. The red-haired girl also asked Wang Pei how her injuries were, she had insisted on being discharged after all. Wang Pei assured Zhu Yan that she was fine, just a couple of abrasions left behind. Liu Xin watched the girls. Wang Pei admitted that she felt calmer next to Zhu Yan. Liu Xin was distracted by the girls and directed his gaze in the other direction. The object of the guy's attention was Wu Yue's mother's altar, especially the inside of it. Liu Xin knocked on the locker door at the bottom of the altar. A loud rumble could be heard and the locker opened. There was a small box inside. Liu Xin took it out and placed it on the table for the others to see as well. In the box was a family photo of Wu Yue with his parents. Wang Pei noted that Wu Yue looked very cute as a child. She didn't expect him to become glum and withdrawn when he grew up. Wang Pei also pointed out that the guy had a very beautiful mom and she died early. But here something scared Li Li and he said there were more things there. The team pulled out contact lenses in a bubble. Wang Pei on the other hand found a cigarette butt. Next, the girl already had a book in her hands. She asked if the guy was some kind of twisted stalker. Zhu Yan immediately remembered this book. He carried it with him all the time. It was obviously very important and useful. Wang Pei offered to see what else was inside. Fingernails, hair, buttons, needles, thread, liquids of some color, and a cookie box. The girl was curious about what was inside the box and opened it. Inside was a stillborn baby that the guy stole from the hospital. Zhu Yan covered half of her face. She was clearly disgusted by this. Li Li said it is now clear what the guy stole from the hospital was the baby's body. Zhu Yan covered her mouth and said she felt nauseous while Liu Xin was looking for something in his pocket. Liu Xin held out two candies to the girl and offered to eat. Zhu Yan hesitantly took them and asked, What are these? The guy explained that it was candy for nausea and the girl eagerly ate it. The girl caught herself thinking that she was no longer disgusted or nauseous. The girl perked up and asked if there were any other good things in the game like that. The guy replied that you can't buy such things. He got them from the world of a serial killer. They were made by a woman who ran a candy syndicate. The maniac bought tons of them before killing. He didn't know he could take them with him. She's great for beginners, added the guy, and Zhu Yan noted that the candy is quite powerful, even too powerful. Duo Li Li and Wang Pei stood and envied this kind of candy, for they too were sickened by what they saw. Zhu Yan started to talk about the high school student. His house lurks a lot of curse books, other people's things, not to mention the stolen baby. He is clearly up to something. Li Li explained that on the day of the sacrifice, the house would be crawling with ghosts. If a curse was involved this time, they were in deep shit. Zhu Yan suggested that from the way things were going, if Yue intended to curse those bullies, unlikely to hang himself right away, it was worth finding them and questioning them again. Liu Xin took out his phone and started calling someone. Liu Xin had already told them to meet and discuss something. The guy's answer apparently did not please Liu Xin for he was a little surprised. Liu Xin was already a little tense, what he heard was clearly not to his liking. He pulled the phone away from his ear and said they couldn't make it. A disgruntled Zhu Yan asked why they don't have the right to refuse her after all. Liu Xin replied that one of them was now dead, 
Zhu Yan was surprised at first when she heard such a thing, but later the girl realized that the process had already been set in motion. One of the bullies turned off his cell phone. The scumbags were sitting and smoking in front of the school. The fat man assumed those two were in trouble. Another bully confirmed his speculation and added that they wanted to know more about Wu Yue. One of the girls was distracted by the guy's conversation. She asked why Wu Yue was not seen today. The video of him stealing the teacher's phone has attracted so many followers on social media. She asked if he could steal the principal's cell phone. The brat stood up and reminded him that their brother was dead. The girl took offense and cried. She asked what was her fault and added that she was grieving in her own way. The guy started telling a story about the loss of a friend. He was riding a stolen bike and hit a truck. The impact sent him flying out, and iron cables pierced him through. He rode like that for a couple of kilometers, before passers-by noticed and called the police. The girl declared to the crying boys that she wished she had been there. She added that such a video could have broken the internet. She also started whimpering, and said that the guy called her that day and offered her a ride. But she knowing the guy had no money refused. And now he is dead. It was an opportunity to get an audience of millions. The thugs immediately realized they were talking to the girl about different things. And the bully started calling the girl names, and said she was only thinking about social media. The girl was no slouch either and told the guy that she wasn't easily scared. The girl asked what was wrong with wanting fame. She was even willing to die to become popular. Just at that moment a piece of glass flew over her. The huge piece of glass cut the girl's body into two even pieces like a butter knife. The bully began to scream at what he saw. The girl's blood was everywhere. The thugs ran to call for help, and one guy with a cell phone stayed over the corpse. Turns out he videotaped the whole thing and assured himself he would be popular. People commented on the video. They wrote that they know this girl. Some didn't believe it, and some recognized both the school and the girl. But the case was clearly unusual. It was evening in Xiao Hotel. The lights were still on in Li Li and Liu Xin's room. Li Li was looking through the cameras on his laptop again. This time instead of Xiao, he was watching Yue's arrival. The man thought that perhaps Wu Yue might not come back. The man got up from the table and thought that he would have to work all night again. Which meant he should put the water for the noodles first. Liu Xin was asleep at the time. The man went to the kettle and instant noodles briefly leaving the cameras behind. The laptop screen showed the main hallway perfectly, and the doors to all the rooms. Meanwhile, in room number 208, the girls were also sleeping the dead sleep. But suddenly, Juyan started to spin around. Apparently, something had woken her up. She sat up on the bed. She did wake up a little. The girl walked like a zombie. She put on her slippers and headed towards the restroom. Sleepy Juyan was already in the restroom and heard someone ask her, Are you going to the restroom? The bewildered girl turned around to a voice telling her that the restroom was horribly clogged and offering to take her to the first floor. The ghost of a woman waved her hand and called after her. Apparently, Juyan recognized the woman. The story was exactly like Wang Pei's. The woman led the girl and asked her to be careful of the rotten floor so she wouldn't trip. Juyan suspected something and wanted to ask the woman. The woman stopped when she heard Juyan's concerned voice. The ghost turned around and said that Juyan was still sleeping, so she also introduced herself as Mrs. Quan. The woman said they had never seen each other yet but that was because she was busy during the day, and her darling was watching the house. Meanwhile, the red-haired girl had already reached the stairs. Zhu Yan walked and staggered a bit. She looked very sleepy. The woman asked her to be careful on the stairs and watch her step. After her words, she pulled her hands towards the red-haired Sonia and tried to push her. It was obvious from Zhu Yan's smile that she was faking it and knew it all along. The girl dodged the ghost's shove and she stumbled up the stairs. Zhu Yan decided to kindly help with a kick, so that the ghost would definitely fall down the stairs. And now, instead of a bright girl, the ghost of Mrs. Kwan falls down. The monster flew somersaulting down the stairs, and Juyan shouted at her that she was awesome. Here's a couple seconds and the ghost is already lying at its final stop. Juyan was pleased with her work and said she couldn't believe how such a fatty didn't get stuck halfway down. The raging ghost called the girl lustful, and said they only had one thing on their mind, how to seduce a married man. Juyan jumped straight with her feet into the ghost's stomach. Upon landing, the red-haired beauty interjected, What did the creepy woman call her? The ghost tried to repeat her words, but not before Juyan started beating her up and mocking her and her husband. She also said that she couldn't kill anyone that way, and it would be easier for them to just give up. The defeated ghost tried to do or say something to the girl, but was no longer able to. The girl took out a runic paper that said that it prevented a ghost or monster from delivering a fatal blow. Juyan grabbed the ghost by the chin, and the creepy woman started threatening her that she would break all her bones, gouge out her eyes, and turn her face into a bloody mess. The girl put the paper in the ghost's mouth, determined to test how it worked, and Mrs. Kwan threatened revenge. The creepy ghost of a woman began to gasp and foam poured out of her mouth. The ghost, as if in a frenzy, began choking on the foam and as if it couldn't breathe freely. Juyan rightfully appreciated the action of the paper. Great thing. 
It's a pity it's true that the number of purchases is limited, and Liu Xin's candy is a real boon. The girl didn't even feel sick after seeing it. Juyan appreciated how the ghost was dying and called it a ghastly sight. Lili had already cooked himself some noodles and reflected on the fact that when he became a player, Ta began to feel personal helplessness in trying to survive. But this time meeting Juyan, he's even somehow ashamed. He may not be as strong and smart, but he will endure all the hardships better than anyone. Li Li was already eating the noodles he had prepared, and assured himself that he would become his team's night guard so that yesterday's incident wouldn't happen again. He would show them that he wasn't nothing. The guy spit out all the noodles on his laptop from what he saw. He heard footsteps in the hallway, but he didn't fully understand what it could mean. Next, he cleared the food from the laptop screen and saw a joyful Ju Yan. The satisfied girl hummed a little song and carried the corpse of the ghost in her hands. The man had never been so settled before, he felt real defeat.